Hello everyone, good morning, good afternoon and good evening according to the different time zone from where you guys are joining me in the session. And we are absolutely good to start work with our course called MS900 that is for Microsoft 365 Fundamentals. So thank you very much everyone for joining me today in this training session and being a Microsoft certified trainer, I am going to be your instructor for your MS900 session in here. So we are absolutely good to start our session for the course MS900. But before moving ahead to work with the session, quickly checking up that, can you guys hear me loud and clear in the class? And also can see the screen which I'm sharing now, it's a PowerPoint presentation. All right, so. I hope I'm audible in the session and thank you very much for the quick confirmations from your rank. So now let's get started with the session with a quick introduction in here. So my name is Ayush Mishka and I'm working as a solution architect and Microsoft certified trainer at GKLearn with having six plus years of experience in the training industry. If I'm talking about my technical exposure in here, so I have started myself as a system administrator, then slowly and gradually I have upgraded myself towards the different cloud technologies over there, like Microsoft Azure, Microsoft Power Platform, Microsoft Business Applications, Dynamics 365, and CRM ERP related things. And I'm working as a infrastructure side of Microsoft Azure as a primary area of my work, as well as I'm working with the Office 365 and security domain of Microsoft as a secondary area of my work in here. I'm also having the knowledge about the Exchange Server and the PowerShell over there. And if I'm talking about my time, so the 60% of my time goes for training the different customers what we have across the globe. And the rest 40% of my time goes for consulting the customers what we are having across the globe. And being a Microsoft certified trainer, I'm also holding these certifications with me. Those are related to the data track of the Microsoft, security domain of the Microsoft, Office 365 related certifications I have. And Today in this course, we are going to talk about the MS-900 that is for Microsoft 365 fundamentals in here. So that is the little bit in terms of my technical exposure that what I am working in. That's fine. So now let's go ahead with the session and talk about the course agenda in here. All right. So I received one question that can we get exam voucher to crack the exam after session? So no, this is the only virtual training session for you all and you are not going to get any type of exam voucher after attending this session. However, if you guys do want to learn the new things, those are related to the Microsoft 365, you guys do want to start yourself with the Microsoft 365 domain. So you can join this session and learn the new things from in here. All right, so the MS-900 Microsoft 365 fundamental course is related to the fundamentals of the Microsoft 365. As we all know that Microsoft is having the different type of products are there in the market, like Azure, Office 365, Windows and different products. So that is the one of the products which we are having in the Microsoft over there. And in this Today's class, we are going to talk about the Microsoft 365 fundamentals. So based on that, we are having separate dedicated courses there. Those are related to the administration of the Microsoft 365. Those are related to the security domain of the Microsoft 365. But today in this course, we are going to look all of the services and the features what we have present as a part of the Microsoft 365 over there. So if I'm talking about the prerequisites for attending this course. So if you guys are really very new to the cloud technologies and you guys do want to start your career with the cloud technologies, you guys do want to learn more about the Microsoft 365 and you guys do want to learn more about the different cloud concepts. So that is the course that is important for you. And if you guys have no any prior knowledge, then that's okay, we are going to start each and everything from the very basic. And we are trying to cover all the aspects what we have to discuss in this course in here. That's fine. 
So this MS900 course is divided into four different modules. If I'm talking about the course agenda in here, and the very first module is talking about the Azure fundamental concept. So in this module, we are going to take a look what are the different types and categories of the cloud computing, which do we have? What is the cloud computing? And how do we go ahead and understand the different concepts? Those are related to the Microsoft Cloud over there or Azure Cloud over there because we are uh, working with the Microsoft. So we are going to take a look over to the Microsoft Azure in this course. Then in the module number two, we are going to take a look over to the different capabilities, different services, what we have present as a part of the Microsoft 365. And also we are going to see that how do we go ahead and increase the productivity in our business, in our organization by utilizing the different services and the products of Microsoft 365. In the third module, we are going to take a look some concepts, those are related to the security, those are related to the compliance, those are related to the identity. How do we go ahead and use the threat protection? So these all are the things what we are going to discuss in the third module of this course over there. And then in the fourth module of this course, we are going to take a look different licensing option, like what are the different type of licensing which do we have available? What is the different service and support related thing which do we have? How Microsoft work with the software lifecycle management over there? So these all are the things what we are going to discuss in our today's session. And also I would like to tell you one more thing in here that we are going to complete all of these things into upcoming four hours. So at any given point of time, if, if you guys are thinking that I'm moving way much faster with the content, I should slow it down in order to maintain the pace of the training. So you guys have a chat access with you. You guys have a mic access with you. Just let me know. So I should slow it down to maintain the pace of the training over there. And during the session, if you guys are having any type of question, queries related to the concepts what we are discussing. So please raise your queries to me and I'm really happy to answer all the queries from your end. That's all right. So that is all about the course introduction in here. And if you guys do want to register yourself with the different type of upcoming events what we have planned on the different technologies. So you can visit to that specific website called gtechlearn.com. Then from this specific area, you can select the event and webinar section. And here you can see one option for the upcoming event. In the upcoming event list, you can see all the different type of events what we have planned. And based on the different technology, based on the, your time availability, you can do register yourself and attend the different sessions what we have planned in future. As well as if you guys do want to view or see the past recording of the events what we have conducted. So you can visit to that specific area that is past event. And from in here, you can access the different recordings of the session what we had in the previous time. That's okay. So that is the one information which I do want to give you all in here. And now I'm going to start the session with the very first module of this course. Before moving ahead, if you guys have any query related to the course introduction, related to the things what I have explained in here, so just let me know. Otherwise, we can continue with the very first module of this course that is talking about the basic cloud concepts over there. All right, so everything looks good in here. So we are going to start the very first module of this course MS900. And in this specific module, we are going to discuss the different fundamental concepts of the Microsoft Azure over there. So in this specific module, we have one lesson that is talking about the different concepts. Those are related to the Microsoft Azure over there. But before that, we need to know that like, what is Microsoft Azure and what is the cloud computing? So in this term, uh, yes, I can share the link over to the chat. Just give me a quick second. So that is the one link from where you can access the past recordings.
and you can visit to this link that is ckclan.com slash webinars dot aspx to do the register yourself for the upcoming event all right no problem so i'm just talking about the cloud computing so the cloud computing is something where we are ranking the IT resources based on the different cloud providers what we have. So just for an example, if I'm talking in a layman language, so if we do want to organize an event or if we do want to organize a party, so instead of owning the entire hotel in in entire we can say the building what we can do we can take that thing on the rank and after our work we are leaving that specific premises so same as like that if i'm talking about the technology term cloud computing in here so in that case we can say that where we are renting the it resources over to the internet with the different type of cloud service provider so that is the something which is known as a cloud computing so say the case same as like that how we are using our telecom services so we are going to use the internet service providers over there so same as like that the vendors who are providing us the different type of cloud services where we can go ahead and rank the IT resource over there, then that provider is known as a cloud service provider over there. And if I'm talking about the top market players of the cloud over there, so the Microsoft, AWS, and Google are the top market players in the cloud technology over there. That's okay. So we can also do one thing if we do want to understand the cloud computing in a simple term so we can say that the cloud computing is on demand computing resource that is going to be delivered to you over to the internet and we have different type of benefits also there like we have a global access over to the resources we are only going to pay for the things whatever the things we are going to use it is highly scalable we we don't want to go with the maintenance related thing because that thing is going to be managed by your cloud service provider so we have a lot of benefits are there so that is the thing what we discussed about the cloud computing now when we have a knowledge of the cloud computing then there is a several deployment models are there that is going to be used by the different type of cloud service provider and based on that we are going to take a services on the rank from the cloud service provider so in that specific thing we have a public cloud private cloud and a hybrid cloud so in the public cloud all the cloud services are provided by the third party provider over there and in that specific thing the hardware can be shared among the multiple clients what we have so we have a different advantages over the public cloud like no maintenance near we have a scalability option available and public cloud scenarios are highly available and if i'm talking about the use case scenario so just for an example if we do want to deploy a website quickly so instead of putting up our own web server then maintaining that web server installing the operating system into it installing the run timing to it installing the application things then it's start utilizing the same so what we can do we can go to the cloud service provider and then we can use the public cloud service in order to host our website very quickly so that is the one thing then if i'm talking about the private cloud so in the private cloud each and everything is going to be managed by you or we can say that each and everything is going to be managed by your organization itself and in that specific area the organizations are responsible for the hardware maintenance and update over there so what does it mean so for an example i do want to start a company that is providing the different web solutions to the client and we want that clients can come and host their website on our company or our, on com our company's web server so in that case what we have to do first of all we have to set up one server on our end then we are going to maintain that thing and providing the services to the user same as like that if we are a company and we do want to share some critical and important data 
to our employees with the very secure access to the different branches. So in that case, what we can do instead of moving towards the public cloud service, we can put up our entire server in our organization. And then we are hosting all the data into that specific server. And then the data is going to be shared with the different branches of my organization over there so that is a private cloud thing where we are going to manage all the things whether it is related to the data center network security application identity each and everything is going to be managed by the organization then the hybrid cloud comes up in the line so if i'm talking about the hybrid cloud in here so in that specific area we are combining the public cloud and private cloud just for an example as a GTEC, we are a learning company. We are providing the different learning solutions to the customer. We are consulting the customers and also we are providing the lab environment to the clients in order to uh, do some practical and hands on over there. So in that specific area, if we need to create any resource for ourselves, then we are creating all the resources inside our own data center. So in that case, that data center is going to be a private cloud for us, private cloud for the JTAC learn. However, if we are going to utilize that data center in order to provide the services to the public clients over there, then for those clients, the JTAC is going to be as a public cloud provider over there. So that is a different type of thing. So in that case where we are combining the private cloud and the public cloud, that is something which is going to be known as a hybrid cloud. So that is a different type of cloud deployment model what we have like public cloud, private cloud and the hybrid cloud. That's okay. Moving ahead and talking about the different type of benefits what we have. So the first useful benefit of the cloud computing that is high availability. So whenever we are utilizing the any of the service that doesn't matter which type of service we are using, we are using the infrastructure as a service where we are uh, renting the IT resources over to the cloud, when we are using a platform as a service where the platform is going to be managed for us or whether we are using the software as a service, depending on the service level agreement, what we have choose against that specific service, your cloud service provider is going to provide you the high availability experience over there. And that is the responsibility for the cloud service provider. And that thing is also mentioned in your service level agreement. That's okay. Then the scalability comes up in the line. In the scalability, you can highly scale your resources based on your need or based on your requirement. Just for a quick example in here. So if, if you are working with the server and the capacity of this server is 16 gig of RAM, 500 gig of storage over there. And in this specific server, I have two virtual CPUs. And at any given point of time, you want to increase that thing so you want to scale that capacity based on your requirement so without affecting your running workload you can easily scale it to up or scale it to the down over there so in the scalability option in the scalability advantage we have two different type of scaling back present the first one that is vertical scaling and the another one that is horizontal scaling so what is the difference between the vertical scaling and the horizontal scaling? When you are vertically scaling the things, so in that case, you are adding the more RAM or more CPU power to your machine. However, in the horizontal scaling, you are going to add the same type of instance of the resource. So just for an example, if we are having a web server and the capacity of my this web server is to handle 500 users or 5,000 users at a time. At any given point of time, we are running a sale and on that specific sale day, I'm having the 15,000 customers traffic inside my this web server. So in the horizontal scaling, what is going to be done? The two different instances are automatically created with the same configuration and all of the traffic load is distributed to the different servers what we have. And then when the requirement is completed, then again those servers are 
going to delete over there. So that that is the horizontal scaling thing. So we have a two different type of scaling options are present in the scalability, the vertical scaling and the horizontal scaling. Then we have a elasticity option also present as a benefit of using the cloud computing services. So when we are configuring the scaling, so by using the elasticity, what we can do, we can create the auto scaling thing because when we are moving with the scalable option, then we have to manually scale up or scale down the things. But when we are using the elasticity over there, then we can also go ahead and use the auto scaling for scaling the things over there. That's okay. Then the agility comes up in the line. So it means that by using that benefit, you can easily deploy and configure the different cloud-based resources very quickly as per your requirement. And it is going to give you the low latency over there. Then geo distribution is also a good benefit of using the cloud computing because you can deploy your application, you can access your data, you can create the different resources across the globe. So if you have an internet connectivity and you will be able to access the Azure or the different cloud services that is provided by your cloud service provider, then you can easily go ahead and create the different type of resources. The disaster recovery is also a good advantage of using the cloud computing resources. So by using the disaster recovery, you can take a backup of your cloud-based services. You can enable the data application. You can deploy your application with the confidence that comes from knowing that if any mishappening is happen over there, that any point of time you are having any natural disaster, then in that case, your data is safe and your application is still up and running. So these all are the some major benefits of using the cloud computing over there. Then if I'm talking about the next one, that is the capital expense versus the operational expense. So in the specific area, first of all, we need to know what is the capital expense. So as I have told you with one example, that if we do want to set up our own company for giving the customers ability to host their website inside our server, then what we need to do, we need to purchase some physical servers, then we need to purchase some router, switch, cable means in a nutshell, we can say that when we are expanding the things to maintain the IT infrastructure for ourselves. So that is something which is going to be known as a capital expenditure. And the cost of the capital expenditure is getting according to the time. When we are talking about the operational expense feature or operational expense. So in that specific area, we are only going to pay for the things, whatever the things we are using. So just for an example, if we have created a virtual machine into the cloud environment, and we are going to run this virtual machine two hours in a day. So we are only going to bill for that two hours when we are using that specific machine. So that is something which is comes under the operational expenditure. Like you are only going to pay for the services. You are only going to pay for the application and the product, whatever the product you are using for the specific time. So we can say that the cloud services are always following the concept of of pay as you go. It means that you are only going to pay for the services, whatever the services you are using. That's okay. Now let's move ahead and talking about the different type of cloud services. So when we are utilizing the cloud in our organization, when we are moving towards the cloud in that specific area, we have the three different type of services. Those are going to be provided by the cloud service provider. The first one that is known as a infrastructure as a service. The another one that is going to be known as a software platform as a service. And the next one is going to be known as a software as a service. So what is the infrastructure as a service? When we are going to take the infrastructure on the rank, so those services is going to be known as a infrastructure as a service. When we are going to take the platform 
over there so that is a platform as a service and same when we are going to only access the software then that is the software as a service so just for an example if i do want to run my own website okay so when we are talking about the on-premises scenario in that scenario first of all what we need to do we need to arrange the hardware like we need to arrange one server hardware first of all then into that specific hardware we are going to install the operating system then we are going to install the runtime then we are going to run our application into it then our application is having the data into it so that is the process how we can go ahead and deploy our own website in the on-premises scenario okay all right uh i got the thing that voice is voice is not audible so please let me know everyone can you hear me in the session All right, so I'm getting yes as an answer. So Vinay, please check the things on your end. And if the issue persists, so you can rejoin in the session. And as I can see in my screen, that you cannot join with your mic. So please rejoin in the session, then you will be able to hear me. All right. So that is the on-premises scenario when we are talking about the infrastructure as a service at that given point of time the cloud service provider is going to manage all the hardware for you okay in that specific area you are not going to manage and maintain your hardware however you have to tell your cloud service provider that which configuration you want okay so that is the thing which is going to be managed by your Cloud service provider, you, you you have to select which operating system do you want to run. Then you can install the runtime into it. Then you can deploy your application, and then your application is having the data whatever the data you are putting up into it. So that is the infrastructure as a service. So for the same, we can say that the example for the infrastructure as a service is going to be a virtual machine. That's okay. Then if I'm talking about the platform as a service, so let me change the color. So in the platform as a service, the hardware operating system and runtime is going to be managed by your cloud service provider. And what you have to do, you have to only run your code, you only have to deploy your code and then start using your application so in a platform as a service cloud service provider says to you that we are going to manage the hardware for you we are going to manage the operating system for you we are going to manage the runtime for you you just have to run your code and then you will be able to access your application so for this one the example is going to be the app service what we have in the microsoft azure then if i'm talking about the next one that is a platform as a service so in the platform as a sorry software as a service my, my apologies in the software as a service area everything is going to be managed by your cloud service provider and based on the subscription and the service which type of service you want to use you have to purchase the subscription and then you will be able to access to that specific software and in that scenario the microsoft 365 is a best example for the software as a service in your daily life you are also using the software as a service cloud service over there like when you are using the gmail when you are using the google drive so that is an example for the software as a service you don't know like how the software is going to be managed how the runtime is going to be managed for running the gmail in which operating system the gmail is running in which hardware the gmail is running what you are going to do you are just going to use the subscription like free subscription and the different subscriptions what are the available in the market and based on that you have access to the different services whatever the services are provided by the microsoft 365 google gmail etc so that is the software as a service so let me jump up to the portal and let me show you that how we work with all of these three type of 
services and how do we utilize our cloud service provider in order to use this type of cloud services. So let me open up my browser here. And here I'm going to portal.azure.com. Okay. And this is the account what I want to use. Let me make a login into it. So now this is the Azure portal and we can use this Azure portal to use the different type of cloud service, whether it is related to the infrastructure as a service, whether it is related to a platform as a service or software as a service itself, that's okay. So as of now, I'm going to host one website and for doing the same, I'm going to create a virtual machine. So in that specific node, you can see that when we are creating the virtual machine, we are going to tell the Microsoft, we are going to tell to our cloud service provider that I want one infrastructure with that specific capacity. So this is, going to be the name for my virtual machine. And I do want to deploy it into the East Key West region. And I don't want any infrastructure redundancy. In the operating system, I want to use Windows Server 2019 data center into it. And I want two virtual CPU and eight gig of RAM in my this virtual machine. This is going to be the user name for my VM. And this is the password what I want to use. All right, and from here, I don't want to allow the HTTP and HTTPS traffic to my virtual machine. Let me go with the review and create. As of now, I don't want to make any changes in the settings. So this is simply, you can see that I'm going to use the infrastructure as a service. That's okay. So for running my website, what I'm going to do, I'm going to install the runtime in my virtual machine. So in a few minutes, I have my virtual machine in place. And then I'm going to install the runtime that is internet information services. And then I'm going to host my website going to that specific server. So in this example, you can see that I have created a virtual machine. So in that specific thing, the maintenance of my virtual machine, the management, the hardware of my virtual machine is managed by the cloud service provider. What I have selected, I have selected the operating system, that like which type of operating system I do want to use, which type of runtime I want to use, and based on that runtime, I can deploy my application over there. So that is the example for the infrastructure as a service. That's okay. So let's just wait. And once we have the virtual machine in place, then we are moving ahead with the demonstration. And till that time, please let me know everyone if you have any questions related to the things what we have discussed so far in the session. All right, so everything looks good in here. And now here you can see the deployment of my virtual machine is complete. Let me go ahead and connect with my virtual machine. So for connecting with my virtual machine, I'm going to use the RDP session. That's fine. And here you can see a dialog box comes up and here I have to provide the username and the password for logging into my virtual machine. So this is going to be the username for me and this is the password. Okay. And now here you can see in a 
few minutes i have my running virtual machine in place you guys remember when we are talking about the different benefits related to the cloud so we talked about the agility so that is the benefit which we can use and we can quickly deploy the resources and start utilizing those resources based on our requirement so that is the benefit what we are getting by using the different cloud services in the real time scenario if we do want to run a web server then first of all we need to take some time in order to manage the hardware first then install the things over there that's okay so now in my this server i'm going to install the iis server that is responsible for the web related things okay So for the same, I'm opening up the PowerShell in here. And here, let me run install Windows feature. and the name is going to be web server include management tool uh yes you can access the recording after the session with the link what i have shared above in the chat all right so now this command is going to install the iis feature in my web in my windows server and then i will be able to use my this server as a web server that's okay so here you can see the installation is in progress and also i'm going to share the public ip address of my vm over to the chat with you all so you guys can visit to that specific IP, you can open that IP in your browser and then you have access to the web server. That's fine. So here you can see that I am managing all the things on my end over there same as like that in the microsoft azure we have one more service available with the name app service and by using the app service we have to just select the runtime that for which runtime i do want to run my application and then only we have to write our code and my application is running over there so here you can see if i'm opening up my explorer in the explorer window let me go to the, this pc in the c drive here you can see one folder i have inac pub and the installation is succeeded in the ww root folder here you can see the default file is present let me make some changes into this file and here i do want to type that this is a demo in ms 900 class that's okay and now i am going to copy the public ip address of my virtual machine and let me paste it into the browser and now here you can see that I have access to my website, what website I have just created for the demonstration. I have also shared the IP address on the check. So if you guys do want to access the same, you can access it as well. Then that is the infrastructure as a service example. If I'm talking about the platform as a service, then for the same, we can use this service in the Microsoft Azure that is known as a app service 
and in the app service we can go ahead and create a new web application and for the same i have to only select those options the resource group so the resource group is a logical container where we can put up all our resources whatever the resources we are creating over to the microsoft azure cloud it's okay then i have to give the name of my application so this is ms 900 class demo app then how do you want to publish your application so if you guys do want to go with the static web application so you can select it if you guys do want to go with the docker container or code so you can select it and then you have to select the runtime on which runtime you want to run your application so here i want to run my application on the dot connect 6 and then you have to select your app service plan so we have a different app service plans are there so the app service plan is something that is going to be give you the capability that how you are going to utilize the hardware for your web application that's okay then you have to create click on the review and create it is validating all the options whatever the options you have selected and when the validation gets done then you will be able to create a web application so here in this example you can see you are not managing the hardware you are not managing the operating system you have just selected the runtime and based on that runtime you will be able to work with your application so that is the example for the platform as a service same as like that if i'm talking about the software as a service example so we can go to the specific url that is office.com and let me make a login into it and here you can see that I will be able to access the different applications what we have in the Office 365 like World, Excel, PowerPoint, SharePoint and the different applications I can access Stream, Togo, Teams, OneNote, OneDrive, Outlook. So why I'm having the access? Uh, if we mention time to access VM over time, ah, uh, yes, you can go with the access chunk because if we are talking about the security purposes, so we have a just in time access thing available, but that is the thing which we are not going to discuss in this fundamental course. Okay. So for the same thing, we have a different courses are there. Okay. So here you can see, I can have access to all the application based on the subscription, whatever the subscription we have purchased so that is the example of a software as a service and now here you can see if i go to the browse then you can see that my application is up and running so this is the platform as a service so by default when you are creating a web application then it will come with the demo content and then if you guys do want to make a changes into that specific content so you can make the changes according to you that's okay so that is the thing what we have to know in a term of infrastructure as a service platform as a service and software as a service so now i hope i hope the thing is clear to everyone then in this specific area you can see whatever the thing i have explained are mentioned in here that in the infrastructure as a service you can configure and manage the hardware for your application in this one, the platform as a service, the platform management is handled by the cloud provider. And in the software as a service, users only have to pay for the things according to the subscription, whatever the subscription they are using. That's okay. So that is the thing what we have to discuss in this specific module number one. Before moving ahead towards the next module, module number two, Please let me know everyone if you have any pending query related to this module. So we can go ahead with your queries. Otherwise I can continue with the second module of MS 900.
All right, so thank you very much for the confirmations from your end. So now we are going to work with the second module of this course. And from this module, we are going to discuss about the Microsoft 365 on which our this course is based. So in this specific module, we have five different lessons are there. In the very first lesson, we are going to talk about the Microsoft 365, that what actually Microsoft 365 is. Then in the next lesson, we are going to describe the different productivity solutions what we have in the Microsoft 365. How do we go ahead and increase the productivity, increase the business value in our organization by using the different products of Microsoft 365. Then if we do want to maintain the collaboration related thing, if we do want to give the employees capability to collaborate in the organization. So that is the thing what we are going to discuss in the lesson number three. Then there are different type of management and deployment concepts are also available in the Microsoft 365. That if we do want to deploy the Office 365, then what are the different deployment models are there? So that is something what we are going to discuss in the fourth lesson of this module. And in the fifth lesson, we are going to describe the different analytics related capabilities of Microsoft. 365. So in this specific lesson, we are going to take a look to the Microsoft Viva over there. That's okay. So let's just go ahead with the very first lesson that is talking about the Microsoft 365. So if I'm talking about the Microsoft 365, so that is the all-in-one subscription based pay as you go software as a service offering. That include the Office 365, Windows 10 Pro and Enterprise Mobility Security for the productivity and maintaining the security inside your organization. So Windows 10 or Windows 11, we can say that is a successor to the different previous operating systems of Windows like 8.1 in all. So same as like that, the Microsoft 365 is a group of all these three things. And also in the Microsoft 365, you are going to have access to the familiar office applications like Word, Excel, PowerPoint, OneDrive, Planner, Yammer, SharePoint, Flow, ToDo, Project, and, and we have a different type of applications are there. And also, a enterprise mobility and security thing is associated with the Microsoft 365. And that is the intelligent mobility management and security platform that is going to give you the capability to protect and secure your organization. And it is also having the things related to the access management. So if you guys go ahead and you do want to access or manage the access for your users, so you can create the different type of access related things if you guys do want to implement some sort of information protection related things like data loss prevention policies and all so you can go with that specific infra information protection option you can go with the threat protection option by using that microsoft enterprise mobility and security component what we have present as a part of the microsoft 365 so the microsoft 365 is a group of all of these three things so we can also say that the microsoft 365 is a cloud-based subscription service and in this specific service we have the different type of tool collections are available that's okay now, moving ahead and talking about the different productivity related thing. So we can increase the collaboration in our organization. We can go with the different cost effective solutions over there. We can uh, work into a proper manner because when we are talking about the uh, traditional things. So if any user is working with the specific file, then another user cannot have access to that specific file because the files are uh, presented locally in the system. But by using the Microsoft 365, many users can have access to the same file at the same time based on the requirement over there. So that is how we can create the collaboration. We can increase the productivity by using the different applications of Microsoft 365 over there. That's okay. Then 
in this specific area that is talking about the different hybrid and flexible work strategies over there. So we all know that in the pandemic time when we are working from the home and we are running our business from the home. So the Microsoft 365 helped the organization, the Microsoft 365 helped the users to stay connected with each other from anywhere in the world. We, we can use the different type of tools for example as of now we are using the zoom platform for conducting this online training session same as like that in the microsoft 365 we have a microsoft teams tool is present microsoft teams application is present and we can use that specific application in order to create the different meeting in order to create the different calls and teams related thing so that is the thing how microsoft 365 help us to connect with each other then when we are working with online cloud services in that case the security is going to be play a integral role into it because we are managing the identities we are managing the users so same as like that when we are working with those things in here then we have to take care of the security for the users so for the same we have a multiple security features are also presenting to it like we can implement the multi-factor authentication that is a built-in security feature for the microsoft 365 over there and also for the windows we are having the different type of protections are available in the microsoft defender and we can implement the information protection in order to prevent the data loss from the organization so we have a multiple security options are also present on the same because microsoft is using the azure active directory as a central identity provider for all the different services what we have present in the microsoft like microsoft azure microsoft 365 microsoft power platform microsoft dynamics 365 so for all of these services the microsoft is using the central identity provider and that is going to be known as a microsoft azure active directory and by using the microsoft azure active directory you can manage your user you can manage your groups you can manage the licensing you can manage the security for those users you can implement the governance related thing so we we have a multiple options are there into the azure active directory as well so whenever you guys are utilizing the Microsoft 365, you are using the Azure over there, you are using the Power Platform Dynamics 365. So behind the scenes, you are using the Azure Active Directory that is hosting all your user data over there. That's okay. And also the Microsoft 365 gave you the capability to work with the devices, work where you are using the concept for BYOD, bring your own device and based on your organization's compliance thing, you can apply the different security settings into it. You can allow and disallow the applications to be run on the device and also you can manage and check the system health based on that. That's okay. And as I told you, the Teams example, so by using that, you can create an and host the online meeting. You can work with the shared workspaces and you can assign the task to each other. So we have a different type of uh, good things are there which we can have by using the Microsoft 365 over there. And that will give us the flexible work environment and the, and the hybrid work environment over there. So if we have employees that they do want to work from the home, so in that specific area, they can use the different Microsoft 365 application in order to increase the productivity without coming up to the office physically. That's okay. Then if I'm talking about the Office 365 evaluation towards the Microsoft 365 over there. So in this specific thing, before 10 years ago, the Microsoft introduced the Office 365. That is a software as a service. And, and maybe you guys are know about the Office 365. So then it is involving the different business productivity online suit into it and the office 365 was designed to bring the different products together over there so in the office 365 we have the core productivity applications are available like uh, world 
Excel, PowerPoint, OneNote, and we are also having the collaboration with the, some communication tools over there like Exchange, SharePoint, Skype for Business. So then after there are different things are changed in the Microsoft 365, we are having the different feature related to the enterprise mobility and security. We have added the Windows 10 over there as a part of the Microsoft 365. And then we have rebranded, then Microsoft has rebranded, my apologies, the Office 365 to the Microsoft 365 with the added features and the benefits over there. That's okay. In this specific thing, if I'm talking about the Windows 365, so Windows 365 is not the operating system that is going to install on your computer, on your personal computers like the window you are installing. So that is a cloud-based personal computer. It means that by using the Windows 365, you can securely stream your personalized Windows desktop. You can stream your application and settings and the content from the cloud device to any device over there. That's okay. So that is the Windows 365 and the evaluation of the Microsoft 365 over there. Then if I'm talking about the subscriptions of the Microsoft 365, so in the Microsoft 365, we have multiple subscriptions are present. And why we are having the subscription? So based on the service and the application which you want to use, the Microsoft is created the different type of subscription options over there because every organization has a unique requirement. So in that case, the Microsoft offers the different type of subscription which organizations can use according to their requirement over there. That's okay. So first of all, we have the Microsoft 365 home in this list and that is the subscription that is going to be used for the personal things over there. So if you do want to use the different applications what we have in the Microsoft Office like Office 2010, 2007, 2016, 2021. So for the same you can go ahead and use that specific Microsoft 365 home product over there. And into this one we have two different plans are there. The Microsoft 365 home for personal use or home for family. So in the family, you are having the different licenses are there, which you can distribute to the different devices. And in the personal one, you have only one license to use. Then the Microsoft 365 education subscription option is present. And that is the subscription, which is available for the educational institution over there. And the Microsoft 365 education empower the educators to unlock the different creativity and they can promote the teamwork while providing the safe experience into a single solution over there. So if you do want to access the Microsoft 365 education license, then you have to use your organizational work email and then you have to provide the details related to your institution, related to your organization. Then you can have access to that specific subscription. Then we have a Microsoft 365 business present as a part of the license. So that is the subscription which is designed for the small and medium sized organization over there. And in this specific thing, we have two different type of options are there. You can go with the month to month billing option or you can go with the per year billing option. So, so that is the different billing options are also there into the Microsoft 365 over there. Then the Microsoft 365 enterprise subscription comes up in the place. So if we have a large organization and we do want to use the different Microsoft 365 products over there. So in that specific area, we can use the Microsoft 365 enterprise subscription and it provides you the enterprise class service by which you can manage the productivity solution for your organization. You can manage the threat protection. You can manage the security. You can manage the compliance for your organization, as well as it is also having the analytics feature over there. So if you guys do want to run the different type of analytics for your organization based on the data, based on the work that is going on in your organization. So that is also 
the thing which you can use by using the analytics feature in the Microsoft 365 Enterprise. That's okay. So these all are the different subscriptions what we have. In our upcoming modules, we are going to take a look to the different licensing options as well. Like what are the different licenses are there and how do we go ahead and utilize it. Then here, if I'm talking about to joining the Microsoft 365 Galloper program, so for the same, you have to visit to the specific link and I'm going to share that specific link over to the chat with you all. And by visiting to that specific link, you can click on the join now and then there is a step written which you can follow. So in that specific page, you have to select that specific E5 subscription option. And then you can see the guide setup, which you have to follow in order to activate your Microsoft 365 E5 developer sandbox subscription. However, if you guys do want to take a trial for the different Microsoft 365 subscription, so you can also go ahead and take the free trial of the same. So here, let me open up my portal. And this is the URL which you have to access. Then here you can see join the Microsoft 365 developer program today. And in this one, you are getting the sandbox, which is included and pre-configured with the sample data in the portal. So you can just click on the join now button in here. Then you have to select your account or if you don't have any accounts, you can go ahead and create a new one itself. That's okay. And then in the dashboard area, you can see the option that you, you can create an instant sang box. So in this one, this is going to be pre-configured with the 16 fixed KCS user. And you have the different data also present. If you guys do want to go with this one, so you can go ahead and configure your own sang box from the scratch over there. So as of now, let me go with this specific option where I do want to go with the in-scan sandbox. Then let me go to the next. And then you have to select your country region, admin username. So the admin username is going to be M365 admin. And this is going to be the password for me. Okay, let me choose another password. It should be between 15 to 20 character. All right. Then if you guys do want to use the alternative password for all 16 facetious users, so you can see that thing. Otherwise you can go with the continue option. Then let me select my country go in here okay then let me provide my phone number and i'm expecting one code on my mobile number so now here you can see that your phone number did not pass the security check because I have cycled up the US as my location. So that's why this is the process how you can go ahead and activate your sandbox environment. So I'm using that account for some different demonstrations as well. So that's why I have added the location as a United States. So that's why it is not verifying my mobile number. So the process is same. You can go ahead with the process and activate your developer environment, your sandbox environment for the same. That's okay. So that is all what we have to discuss in here. Before moving ahead with the lesson number two, that is going to describe the different productivity solution in the Microsoft 365. Let me show you two different portals what we have in the Microsoft 365. So we all know that that is a cloud-based service. So for the cloud-based service, if you do want to access the client-side interface, so you can go to this specific URL called office.com. 
and by accessing the office.com you can go ahead and access the web version of world excel powerpoint OneNote, sharepoint team booking yaml power automate rewind site stream sweep and same as like that if you guys do want to administrate the thing you want to manage the user group license and all so for the same you can go to the new tab and visit this specific link that is admin.microsoft.com let me go with the url admin dot microsoft.com so this is the administration url Oh. all right and in this admin portal you can see all the settings those are related to the administration like if you guys do want to go with the user management group management device management license management billing setup so you have all the things are available in that specific portal and here you can see in the users and group area in the active user you can see all the active users what you have if you guys do want to go with adding the user so you can add the users from this area you can remove the user from this area you can add the multiple user you can manage the licenses for those users in the group area you can manage the groups you can manage the teams so we have all the options are present and same as like that if you guys do want to go with the billing things you want to manage the billing for your organization so in the purchase service area you can go ahead and subscribe a new product for you if you guys do want to activate the trial so you can activate the trial from this area as well same as like that in the your product and the licenses area from this specific area you can see how many licenses you have when those licenses is going to be expired and how many license you have used and how much quantity you have present for each license so you can see all of these things into the billing section over there that's okay then we have a support section setting section setup report health so we have a multiple things are present then this is the one thing as i told you that all microsoft product is using the azure active directly as a central identity provider so from this specific area in the admin center if i click on to this area that is redirecting me to azure active directory portal so in this specific portal you can see we have all the users are present what the users i have in the microsoft 365 so let me go to the active user area and here you can see that I have all the users are present. That's okay. So for an example, if I do want to create a new user from in here, so let me create a new user with the name Rohit. And then here you can see, I have to provide the name. And the rest of the fields are optional. If you do want to fill so you can fill it you can select the user's location you can select the sign in block option yes or no so if you guys do want to block the sign in for the user then you can select this option as yes the important thing is that if you guys do want to assign a license to the user then you must have to select the user's location because you cannot assign a license to the user without assigning the user's location so that is the important thing okay let me select the user's location for my user and then i click on the create so here you can see in my azure active directly i have created a new user with the name rohit so my this user is also present into my microsoft 365 over there because that is only an identity provider service this is that is going to be used by the microsoft 365 as well that's okay then same as like that if you guys do want to manage the teams so you can go to the team segment center and in your microsoft teams application if you do want to 
create the different type of policy, different type of seconds for your team. So you can use this teams admin center for the same. And in the team admin center, you have a lot of options to be available, which you can configure to manage your teams over there. So in the Microsoft 365 Admin Center, you have all the administration options are present. And same as like that, if you guys do want to go with the compliance related thing, you want to manage the compliance for your organization. So from the same, you can go to the compliance area and the security area. And by moving to this area, you can manage the security related thing and the compliance related thing for your organization as well. That's okay. So that is the quick overview of the different portals what we have. It's not really possible to discuss all the portals what we have present and all the things what we are presenting to the Microsoft 365 because there is a lot of things what we have in quick. But, but as, as for the fundamental thing, I'm just going to give you the overview of the important portals which we are utilizing. That's okay. So now let's go back to the presentation and let's discuss the different productivity solutions in here. So in this specific area, it is talking about the different applications what we have present into the Microsoft 365. So we all are familiar with the world Excel PowerPoint over there. So I'm not going to discuss those applications. However, we have a Microsoft Teams, we have a Office 365, we have a OneDrive, SharePoint, Outlook, Exchange, Planner, Project, Booking, to do. So we have a lot of applications are present which we can discuss over there. That's okay. So first of all, I'm going to talk about the very first application that is Outlook. So the Outlook is an email client application and here if I'm moving back to my portal, so let me go to the office.com dashboard and from in here I can access the Outlook. So by using the Outlook, we can work with the email, that is the email client application. By using the Outlook, we can manage our calendar, we can manage our appointment, we can manage our meetings. So that is a web-based utility of Outlook that is I'm accessing as of now. Same as like that, if you guys do want to use the desktop application instead of the web application, so the standalone desktop web application is in instead of web application the desktop app is also available for the microsoft outlook my apologies so here you can see in the outlook i can manage my email i can manage my calendars over there i can create the different tasks we can go with the teams calls so we have a lot of email collaboration options are present then we have a exchange online present so same as like that, whenever we are accessing any website, so we are accessing the front end of the website as a result. And in the back end, we are having the different servers and services are running for the same. So same as like that for managing the emails over there, the exchange is responsible. So previously we are using the exchange into the on-premises that is known as the exchange server, but Microsoft integrated the online version of the Microsoft exchange server with the Microsoft 365 over there. So we can go ahead and access the exchange online itself if we do want to manage the messaging solution. So the Microsoft Exchange is online hosted messaging solution that will help you to manage the different services related to the email over there. So by using the Exchange server, you can give the user access to the email, you can give the user access to the calendar, you can give the access to the contact over there and also by using the exchange online you can manage the mailbox for the user you can manage the mobile and the platform access for the user you can create the different message policies over there you can create the anti-spam and anti-malware policy by using the exchange online over there so how do we access the exchange online so for the same first of all you have to go to the admin center area 
and from the admin center area on the left hand side of the screen you have to click show all button and in the admin center you can see this option present for the exchange you have to open this one and this will redirect you to the exchange admin center and from in here you can manage the mailboxes for the user and the url for the exchange admin center is admin dot exchange dot microsoft dot com so here you can see that i have just created a user rohit but as of now there is no mailbox is created for that specific user rohit so now if i am trying to make a login to the outlook with the user rohit then see what's going on so let me go to the active user area And from in here, let me select this user. And I'm going to copy the user principal name for my user Rohit. Let me reset the password. Okay, then I'm going to open up another browser. And here I'm going to access outlook.office365.com. This is going to be the user name for me. And this is the password. And then here you can see that I'm getting an error because the mailbox for user Rohit is not created in the exchange. That's why I cannot have access to the outlook for my user Rohit. So for the same work I need to do, I need to just go ahead and create the mailbox in the exchange admin center so we can add the mailbox from in here as well as what we can do. We can simply go to the active user area and I'm going to assign the license to my user and when I'm going to assign the license to my user then the mailbox is automatically created for that specific user. So here I have selected the Microsoft 365 business premium license and in this license you can see those applications are present. So in all of those applications we can also see the outlook in here so here you can see the office for web is there so in the office for web application we have all the things are present like for excel powerpoint outlook so i have just assigned the office business premium license to the user microsoft 365 business premium license to the user then let me go to the exchange center and refresh my page it could take some time when you are assigning the license to the user it approximately take five to ten minutes or sometimes it could take 24 hours in order to reflect the changes and then after a mailbox is created for my user rohit after assigning the license and then after user rohit can have access to the outlook so in the back end the exchange online is working to manage the different messaging solution for the users over there that's okay so let me go to the my browser again and i'm going to access the same outlook.office365.com Here, I'm going to put up my password. Uh oh, sorry. I have to give the username first. Okay, so it is giving me the error. So let's just wait for uh, some time. And then we can see the user Rohit is able to access the Outlook. 
okay thank you sashank so that is the one way how we can work with the exchange in the backend so i have discussed about the two applications the exchange online and the uh outlook then let me go ahead and talk about the another application what i have present that is a sharepoint before talking about the sharepoint let me give you some detail about the one drive so same as like that how we are using the gmail or the google drive over there so we are using the google drive for storing the different files over there so same as like that in the microsoft we have one drive in place same as like the google drive and we can use the microsoft one drive to put our file and also we can share our files by using the one drive over there so in the free node the microsoft is giving the five gig of space in the one drive and if we are going through with the subscription so it is giving us the one terabyte of storage in the one drive so we can store up to one terabyte data into the one drive so that is the one thing so that is the thing where we can put up the data and share our data publicly with the different users inside or outside in our organization now let's go back to the all application area and then let me open up the sharepoint so the sharepoint is used to create a different type of websites over there and that is the online web based content collaboration and management tool so we can use the microsoft sharepoint to organize share the documents in our organization so by using the sharepoint we can create the internal websites which is going to be accessed by our users and they can have the capability to manage the documents over to the sharepoint we can also configure the external sharing into the sharepoint online but for the same you have to invite the external user in order to collaborate with the document whatever the document you have in the microsoft sharepoint so in the microsoft sharepoint you can create a different type of site so here if i'm creating a site so when you are going to create a site then it is asking you that which type of site do you want to create you want to create a communication site or do you want to create a team site so we have a multiple type of sites are there as of now let me go with the team site so the name of my site is going to be ms900 demo then here you can see this is your site address and by accessing that specific site you can have access to the documents to the list whatever the things we have in the sharepoint if you guys do want to describe some description so you can go with that then you can manage the privacy setting from for your site so anyone in your organization can access this site with the public setting or you can go with the private option so in the private option only the members can have access to the site whatever the what the member you are adding into this site that's okay then here you can see in add member area you can type the name for the members so first of all let me add myself so i am going to be the owner of this site then if i do want to add another user so i can add another user as a member of this site so only ganesh can have access to this site because i have added this user as a member over there that's okay and once i have my site in place then here you can see i can go ahead and create a document library i can go ahead and create a post i can create a list i can create a news list i can create a app plan so we, we have a multiple options are there and same as like that if we do want to check the analytics if we guys do want to check the report so we can have the analytics options are also presenting to it so that is how we can use the microsoft sharepoint and if we do want to automate the process through the sharepoint so we can create the different type of workflow over there and for the same we have to integrate the two different applications of microsoft that is the power automate and the sharepoint as well as if you guys do want to access the sharepoint 
on your mobile phone so the mobile application for the same is also available that's okay now let's just talk about the another tool what i have and that is the microsoft teams so we all know that we are using the microsoft teams in order to run the instant chats over there we can go with the group chat we can organize a meeting with 10000 users we can have the audio conferencing options are presenting to the microsoft teams anyone can join and anyone can dial the number over to the teams so we have a audio call sharing facility available in the team we can go with the video call we can share our screen we can share the document we can share the different insights over there so we have the lot of options are presenting to the microsoft teams over there that's okay so in my system i have installed microsoft teams and my organization is also utilizing the microsoft teams So for the same here you can see based on the different work we have created the different type of teams in here and if we want to see the team detail then we can see the different team details that like whatever the members we have in the team we can see our calendar we can go with the individual chat we have integrated the different type of applications in the files area we can see the different files what we have in the team so same as like that we have multiple options are presenting to the microsoft teams so if we do want to increase the collaboration in our organization so we can use the microsoft teams that's okay Okay. Then we have a next tool is also present into the Microsoft Office 365 and that is going to be known as a planner. So let me go to the all application area and in this area explore all application. Here you can see I have all the applications are listed in here. So in this one I have the microsoft planner in place so before talking about the planner let me give you the information about the to do sorry so in the to do area that is the personal task management and that is the single place from where you can manage all your personal and work and assign the task you can create the group you can create the list task and the reminders over there so here you can see for an example i want to add a task that today i have to deliver ms 900 session so this is the task and in this specific task, I can go ahead and add a different type of steps. So the step one is start session with the introduction. Let me add this step. Then I can add another step that gave course introduction. Uh oh, let me give course in introduction okay then in the next step i can go with the start module one let me add it in the next step i can go start module two so same as like that in the specific task you can add the different step and based on that you can complete and make the check in here in order to complete all the tasks whatever the task you have completed so same as like that you can create the different type of task in the task area if you guys do want to create a different type of list and in that specific list you want to create a different type of task so you can have that option also presenting to the to do here so in this list you can see that i have created a demo list in here then in the demo list you can assign the different type of tasks over there same as like that if you do want to share so you can create the invitation link and by that invitation link you can share the specific task with the other users as well that's fine then let me go to the 
next application that is a planner so the planner is an application which you can use in augur to manage the teamwork and manage the task so by using the planner you can assign the task to the user you can monitor the progress of the task you can share the file and you can also build the report for the task over there and microsoft is giving you the built-in report for the task so how you are going to assign the task how your your users and teammates are completing the task based on that microsoft also give you the report of that specific task so as of now here you can see that i have one previous task present one previous plan present that is for ms 900 webinar so the first one bucket is to do where i have assigned the task that is planning for the ms 900 webinar then we have another bucket that is for planning execution and in this user have to create the webinar poster then the setup meeting bucket in here where we are planning for the zoom session and in the final bucket we have to collect the feedback and we have assigned the task and execute the webinar so based on that report if we go to the chart area in the chart area you can see that how many tasks are left how many tasks are in progress how many tasks are late how many tasks are completed we can see the detail according to the bucket we can see the detail according to the priority we can see the detail according to the member to whom I have assigned the task. So that is how we can work with the planner. So if we go to this option that like a plan. So in the plan, we can say that develop a web application. Okay, and this is the private task. In the options, you can select the description. Let me go ahead and create a plan. And then I have to assign the task. So in the to-do bucket, I can uh, type the plan for the web app. Okay. Then here, write the code. Then I can add one more bucket, test the app. And here, deploy to the production. So here you can see I have created the four different stages in the form of bucket that like if you do want to develop a web application. So first of all, we have to plan for the web application in this one, check the requirements from the client. And we can set the give gate. So for this one, the give gate is for two gate. And I want to assign this task to one of my user ganesh that's okay then based on that i can add this task in write the code area so just for an example i have marked this task as a complete then in the write the code area i can go and write the code in php okay and for this one i'm going to assign this task to do on 13 and I do want to assign this task to my user Rohit. That's okay. And this task is in progress. So here I can go with the in progress option. So if you guys do want to set the start date, give date, you can set the priority. So that is on the important priority. You can add the note, you can add the checklist, you can add the comments over to the task as well. Then in case the application, I do want to assign this task that test the app in local host. And for this one, the give gate is 14 and I want to assign this task to me and then deploy the production. So here you can see that I have created some demo task and based on that thing, if we do want to see all the things into a grid manner. So in the grid, we can see the title, assignment, start date, give date, bucket, progress, priority. We can see those things into a board manner. We can go with the chart area and here you can see the chart is automatically created based on the things what we have configured into the board option. 
if we do want to schedule so we can see the schedule from in here and also we can check the different conversation options in the outlook we can go with the member area file so if you guys do want to add file so you can add the file in the OneDrive and SharePoint and then you can integrate those things in here you can also go to the plan setting and in the plan setting you can set up the different type of background for your plan you can go with the group and create a group for your plan in the notification area you can set this option send email to group when the task is assigned or completed you have also the different settings are present which you can select from in here so that is how we can work with the planner okay then we have another tool present that is known as a microsoft Stream and we can use the Microsoft Stream to privately host our videos like YouTube. So by using the Microsoft Stream, we can upload, view and share the videos securely. And we can also share the recording for the company news, for the meeting, for the training presentation and all. Then we have a Power Automate in place. So in the Power Automate area, we can create the automation so as per the name you can see the power automate is something which is used for the automation so we can use the power automate in order to automate the thing so just for an example here if i'm opening up the one drive and we are uploading the files into the OneDrive. And we want that if someone is uploading the file into the one drive then a email is to the administrator or when i'm getting any email with the attachment then file is automatically saved on my one drive so for creating that type of automation what we can do we can use the power automate that's fine so we are going to see the power automate in here so in the power automate area if i go to the my flow Okay, let me select my environment, that is MS class. And here, as of now, you can see that I have no flow. Let me go to the template. But before that here, I want to create a new folder. And that is my auto save folder. And that's okay. In the template, I want to save all my office 365 email attachment to the specific one drive for business folder that's okay so if i'm getting any email on my email with the attachment then the attachment is automatically saved on my one drive for business that's fine that is the automation what i do want to create so after setting up the connection let me go to the continue And this is my attachment automation. Here you can see that when new email arrived in my inbox and email is con <laughs> sorry containing the attachment, then save that specific attachment into the folder auto save. And let me select the save same folder here. And then I'm going to save this flow. So I have used the template here to save the time. You can also create the flow from the scratch as well. Then now in the flow, I have one flow available. Let me open up my mail. And from in here, I want to create a new mail. And I want to send this mail to myself, like it's admin com. the subject is going to be the demo and i'm going to attach some attachment in here so let me select these things as an attachment and then let me send this email in my outlook let me open up the outlook and I'm expecting one email in my inbox with the attachment. And here you can see I have my email. And in my email, I have three attachment, class detail, 
class info and the sales report. That's okay. I am opening up my flow and here in my flow, let me check the run. In a one or two minute, I have one flow run in here. And when the flow run is succeeded, then my Outlook email attachment is automatically saved into the auto save folder in my OneDrive. That's okay. So we have to wait for some time and then we can see the thing. Till the time we can go ahead with the next tool what we have. So in this one we have multiple tools are there like Power BI, Power App. So if we do want to create a different type of application without even writing a single line of code. So we can use the Power Apps for the same. So here you can see in this area make.powerapps.com. Here in the app section, let me select the current environment. So in this specific area, you can see that I have multiple applications are there, what I have created in earlier time. And if I do want to run those application, so I can just click on that specific application and then I have access to the application over there. So that is how we can work with the Power App. So I'm just explaining the work of all of these things, but in all of these things, we have a separate dedicated course are also present. So as of now, we are working with the very fundamental thing. So I'm just giving you the brief about all of the applications what we have. That's okay. Let me go to my flow area and let me check the run. And then here you can see I have one flow run present in here. Let me go back to the one drive in my auto save folder. Here you can see I have all my three attachments are available automatically. So that is how we can use the power automate. That's okay. Same if we do want to create a report. Okay, so we can create a report by using the Microsoft Power BI. So just for an example, if I have some data with me and that data is with me in a form of a row and column. And I do want to create a proper visualization. I want to create a scanning report dashboard based on the data what we have. So for creating that type of report dashboard, we can use the Power BI. So Power BI means the Power Business Intelligence and that will help us to analyze our business data with the different visualization option. Like we can use column chart, we can use the pie chart, we can use the bar chart, we can use the different map things over there in order to represent our data into a very proper manner. So I'm opening up the Power BI where I have one report created and here you can see let me close it that is how we can create a different type of interactive report. And here you can see the data, the data I have in the form of the table. So just for an example, with this type of data, if I do want to know that I want to see the sum of the revenue based on the specific product, then we have to create a filter, we have to set a relationship, we have to filter the columns, then we have to calculate the thing. Then we can tell that how many products is giving how much revenue to us. But by using the visualization here, you can see, I can see the percentage. I can see the revenue, the sum of the revenue based on the specific product name. We can see the average of revenue by the product name. So we have the multiple options are present. So if I do want to see the detail for the specific products only, so we can select the specific product and based on that, we can see the report, whatever the reports we have. So that is how we can work with the Power BI and that is the use of Microsoft Power BI, what we have present as a part of the Microsoft 365. That's okay. Then let me go back to the browser 
and here I have other different applications are present. Let me close these caps and I want to see all app. Let me go to the all app. Same as like that, if we do want to create the different type of note instead of writing the things into the physical notebook. So for the same, we can use the one note and by using the one note option, we can create the different type of note for us and we can access those note on our mobile devices as well. That's fine. Same as like that, we have a whiteboard, we have a Yammer. So we have multiple tools are present which we can use. So in the planner, we have a limited things available. If we guys do want to work with the project, so the project is an expanded version of the planner and we can use the planner sorry, project in order to match the things into a proper manner. So the project is the powerful project management tool that is designed by the Microsoft and that will help you, sorry, to manage the complex work over there. So as of now, the Microsoft is offering the project over the cloud and also you can install the Microsoft project in your systems as well. So now here you can see in the project area, I already created one project for the software development. In the summary area, I can see the summary. In the task area, I can have access to all the tasks, whatever the tasks we have running for the specific project over there. That's fine. So in the project, we have all the things are present. So if I do want to go with the project area, where it is Microsoft project, let me open it again. Okay, and then I'm going to open an, or create a new project and I want to create a marketing campaigning project, for example, and I'm utilizing this template. So in this specific project area, we can see the detail into the grid manner where we have all the details are present. We can go to the board to add the task and here you can see we have different buckets and tasks are present. Uh, yes, Sashank, just after this explanation, we are going to take a break for 10 minutes, okay? Then in the timeline area, we can see the timeline in the chart, we can see the report in the people, we can see that how many people are engaged in the project, project, sorry, and what they are working on. So these all are the different applications what we have to discuss in here. So before moving ahead with the next concept, we are just taking a quick 10 minutes break in here and then we are continuing with the session. So till the time, enjoy your break guys.
All right, so once again, welcome back everyone in the session after a quick break in here. So please everyone mark your presence in the session so I can continue with the module. All right, so thank you very much everyone for the confirmations from your end. So, in the previous slide, we talked about the different tools, what we have, like Teams, OneDrive, SharePoint, Outlook, Planner, Project, and all. So same as like that, the Microsoft 365 applications giving us the capability to work across the multiple devices. We can access the Office 365 or we can say the Microsoft 365 application to the mobile devices, to the laptop, to the desktop, or also we can access those applications on the web-based session as well. And all of these applications are always up to date and we can can increase our experience by working into those applications intelligently. Like if we do want to do some collaboration, if we do want to maintain the security for the files, so we have the multiple options are there. So same as like the applications what we have discussed. So we have also World Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook, OneNote are included into the Microsoft 365 application list. That's okay. Then moving ahead. So here you can see the work management tool. So in the work management tool, we have these kinds of tools are there like Microsoft to do, Microsoft booking, planner and the project. So we talked about the Microsoft to do that what it is. We already seen the demonstration of planner project and to do. So now let's just talk about the Microsoft booking in here. So we can use the Microsoft booking tool. If we do want to manage the appointment, if we do want to go with the scheduling management system. So for the same, we can use the booking applications over there. And this booking application simplify the process of scheduling and managing the appointment over there. And it is having the web-based booking thing available, which can integrate with the Outlook and the calendar in order to optimize your staff's calendar accordingly. And based on that, you can create the different type of bookings over there. So by using the Microsoft booking, we can create the different type of appointment. We can manage the stuff. We can set up business hour. We can set up the services. And also based on that, we can customize like how someone is going to schedule the appointment based on the web-based business facing pages over there. Or, or we can create a link by using that link. Users can go ahead and create a booking for the same. So now let's jump up to the portal and see like, how do we work with the bookings in here. So for the same in all application area, we have the bookings in place, this one, and we can use the bookings for the schedule management and the appointment management. So as of now, I do want to create a new booking page from the scratch. That's okay. And the name of my booking is for the IT support port bookings uh oh let me correct the spelling then in the business type the business type is going to be it support if i do want to add a logo then i can go ahead and add a logo into it i can set up the business hour so i can select my business hour from the specific time that's okay then here I have to invite the staff. So I want to invite the Shivam as a team member. You can invite as a scheduler. You can invite as a viewer or the guest. So if you do want to assign the user role to only view the bo bookings, sorry. So you can assign them the viewer role. You can also go with the scheduler and team member role as well. That's okay. Let me add one more user Ganesh in here. Then let me go to the next. And here we have to set up the service. So a service is an appointment type that is created in here. That's fine. So that is the first service that is created for the 30 minute. You can change the duration to 45 minute. You can set up the timing. So as of now, I have set up my office business hour from 10 a.m. to 6 a.m. So let me set the service time from 11 to 5 in here. That's okay. And also we can make this as a team making. 
and I'm updating the service. Let me go with the next and then choose who can book the appointment. So the people in my organization, so that is a self-service or the anyone. So as of now, I'm going through with this option that like anyone can book the appointment and it is going to be create a self-service booking page. After selecting the option, it is setting up the booking page for me. And then I have the link with me and I can share that link with you all or, or I can use that specific link in order to work with the same. That's fine. I can click again. And now here you can see I have this booking URL. Let me copy this and I'm going to open another browser. And let me open up this link. So if you guys do want to access the same link, I have shared it on the chat for your reference. And here you can see I have my service and here I can select the staff. So I'm selecting the Shivam as a staff as of now, or I'm selecting myself as of now. Then I want to select the gate. So today I want to make a booking on 5 p.m. And if I do want to add my detail, so let me add my detail like this one. And the, this is going to be the email or, or I can use my admin email and need help on MS Office installation. Okay, so you can add the address and the phone number optionally. And let me click on the booking. Sorry, book. So it is creating a booking for me. And once the booking is completed, then I can see that specific booking in my portal as well. And as well as I have received the email for the same. And now here you can see, thank you for booking with us. You will get a confirmation message in email shortly. And here you can see the details of your upcoming booking. You, If you do want to reschedule it, you can do it, you can cancel it, or you can create a new booking from in here as well. Let me go back to my admin portal. And here you can see I have one booking if I refresh my page. And here, let me go to the specific time on 5 p.m. for 13. And here you can see I have my booking. I can see the detail of my booking. Same as like that, if I'm going to open up my Outlook, then I have received the confirmation of my booking on my email as well. So here you can see I have received the email that a new booking comes up for me. And I have used the same email ID for the booking so here you can see i am having my booking details available with me and i can join in the teams meeting just clicking onto this button in here so that is how you can utilize the microsoft booking for managing the appointments and the scheduling things over there that's okay then moving ahead with the next option, so that is talking about the Microsoft Exchange. So we already talked about the Microsoft Exchange and let me go back to my portal again. And you remember that I have assigned the license to one of my user Rohit. And from in here, I'm going to access the admin center and I want to see in the Exchange Online, the mailbox for user Rohit is created or not. That's fine. It is opening up from the admin center. Let me open up the exchange online portal. And in my exchange admin center, I'm selecting up the mailbox. And in the mailbox area, here you can see the mailbox is created for my user Rohit. And now let me go ahead and again try to make a login to the outlook.office365.com with the user Rohit. 
Okay, and let me enter the password. And now here you can see the user Lohit can have access to the same. So that is how the exchange online is working in the backend. If we do want to create a shared mailbox that is going to be shared by the different user. So we can also create the shared mailbox. So just for an example, here I'm moving back in my exchange online and let me create a shared mailbox. And the name of my shared mailbox is ms900 demo. And the email is ms900 demo at the rate ms class bec.microsoft.com and let me go with the create option and let me add few users into this mailbox so i want to use myself and hit as a user in this shared mailbox that's fine Refresh my page. And from in here in the mailbox area, I'm going to select my shared mailbox. And then in the delegation, or I can see the users area. All right. There is an option group membership. And in this one, I want to add some users. Why it is not giving me the option. Manage contact information, manage this one, mobile devices in the organization. I'm having the organization detail. Okay, and let me add two members and I want to add myself and the row hit as a member of my mailbox. Then let me confirm the permission. And then here you can see the mailbox permission will add it to the mailbox. And this is my shared mailbox. Let me open up my email client application and I'm going to share one mail onto this specific shared mailbox. So in this specific area, I want to create a new mail to this specific email. <coughs> and the subject is shared mailbox. And this is a shared mailbox demo. That's all right. Let me send this mail. And then how do we go ahead and access the shared mailbox? So for the same, we can go to our Outlook web client and select in our username. And then here you can see one option for open another mailbox. And here I have to type the name of my mailbox. And let me open it up. And here you can see the email is received from for to the user Rohit. Same as like that, if I go back to my Outlook, so let me open up another browser where I have logged into my Outlook. So I'm opening it up. And then I'm going the same. Let me open another mailbox. And I want to open my MS900 mailbox. Oh, let me open the current one.
And now you can see that I have received the same email. So that is how we can work with the exchange online in order to manage our email, in order to manage our calendar setting, creating the different type of shared mailboxes and the user mailboxes itself. So that is the thing what we have to discuss in the exchange online. Now let's move back with the lesson number three that is talking about the different collaboration solutions into the Microsoft 365. So for the collaboration, for clicking the different type of collaboration in here, we are using the Microsoft Teams. So in the Microsoft Teams, <laughs> we have two different concepts are there, the Teams and the Channel. So the teams are the collection of the people where we are adding the different type of people. We are having the content. We are having the tools. We can also use the chat feature if we guys do want to go with the one to one chat option. We can organize the online meeting. We can use the Teams phone. We can collaborate with the different application as well as we can manage the security and the compliance for the Microsoft Teams as well. So how do we do that? Let me give you an example. So here I am going to open up <coughs> the Teams on web client, the teams.microsoft.com. And I want to use my admin e email. <laughs> so we have two different options are present. If we guys do want to access the teams, we can go with the web client application that is I'm using as of now or also we can download teams for work and school in our desktop and we can use the desktop application i'm not going to use the desktop application as of now because my desktop application i have logged in with my corporate credentials that's fine then here you can see in the teams area we can go with the one-to-one -one check so for an example if i do want to go with the one-to-one -one check with any one of my user so i can go with that so let me do one thing in my another browser let me make a login with another user rohit to the teams <coughs> That's okay. So, so now if I do want to initiate one to one instant chat, so I can just click on this new compose button, then I can search for the user. <coughs> so let me search for my user. And here I can go with my message. Okay. And in the another hang where I have logged in with my user Rohit, user Rohit has received a hello message from me. So that is the instant messaging thing. For the same, we can go with the video and audio call itself. If we do want to go with the chat, sorry, teams area, and we want to create a team. So we can create a new team. So let me go with this option, create a team. And we can create the team from scratch, or we can also create a team from the group. So for an example, if we have a group present where I have 10 members are added, so we can create a team from a group. So by creating the team from a group, we don't need to add those persons individually in the team. The group members are also added as a team member itself. <laughs> if you want to create a team with the scratch from the very scratch thing from the basic so we can go with this option then we have a three different options are there so you can go with the private one so only you can join and remove the peoples from the team you can go with the public option that anyone in your organization can join your team and we can create an organization-wide team. So when you're creating the organization-wide team, then what, how many users are there in your organization are automatically added in your team. So just for an example, I have created a team GTEC demo. <clears throat> and let me go with the create option. So it is creating the team and then it is adding all the users in my organization. 
this <coughs> this one as a member of my team after some time so it could take some time then we can go with the another option where we can create a game from the scratch and this time let me go with the private option and the name of my game is going to be ms900 demo <coughs> Let me create it and then I have to add the members manually in my team. So let me add my user Shivam into the team. I want to add Rohit into the team. I want to add Mayank into the team. <coughs> and let me go with add. So I want to assign the owner permission to the teams to the user Rohit. That's okay. And now here you can see in the member list, I have three members are there. You can see I have one activity area also present. So whatever the activity is going to be happen for the specific user, we can see that thing in the activity area. Just uh, yes, I'm going to problem. So in this specific activity area let me refresh the teams for the user Rohit and then here you can see activity I can see that uh, you have added in the team you have removed from the team so here in the activity you can see the Microsoft Teams everything added you to the GTEC Ayush added you to the GTEC demo and I use maybe the owner. So in the activity area, you can see all the activity. Then in the chat area, you can see the individual chats. In the call section, you can see the call. In the calendar, you can see the different calendar related things what we have. So that's how we have all the things are available. <laughs> Then in the teams, inside the teams, we have a different channels are there. So what are the channel? Channel are dedicated section within a team. And we can use those channels to keep the conversation organized by the specific topic, by the specific project over there. So for an example, I have created this MS900 demo team. So whenever you are creating a team, a general channel is created automatically if you guys do want to add a new channel so you can go there and add a new channel so for an example in ms900 in this channel i do want to discuss for the what is microsoft 365 so i have created a channel that is microsoft 365 introduction <coughs> Okay, then if I do want to add one more channel where I do want to explore the different Microsoft Office 365 services, so I can add a one more challenge in here and that is for explore M365 services and apps. Okay, so we cannot add the special characters into it. So that is how we can create the different type of channels. And when we are creating a channel, we can have option to create the different type of channel. So we can create the standard channel that can be open to all team members. We can create a private channel that are for the selected team member, or we can also create the shared channel and then we can select the people from outside and inside to the teams over there. That's fine. So here you can see that I have created one organization wide team with the GK demo name and in the member area you can see that all the users of my organizations are added automatically into my this GK demo team organization wide team over there. That's okay. So if I'm removing the user into my active directory, if I'm adding the user into my active directory, then I can see that changes in here as well. That's fine. Then Moving back to the presentation, we have another option that we can extend the team by using the different collaboration for the applications. So yes, that's really true. So here you can see in the teams area, we have app sections are available. So let me go to my admin portal. 
no not on this one and here you can see in the app section if you do want to add some application so you can add different type of applications from in here so just for an example i, I do want to add the project in my team i do want to add a planner i do want to add a power app so we can add those application into the microsoft teams itself so let me go it to one that is add to team and i want to add this project to my ms 900 demo team in the general tab let me set up a tab and then you can see i have a new tab available in to this general channel with the project so i can create a new project and the name of my project is going to be demo and let me click on the save and here you can see in my ms 900 demo team on the general channel in the post a automatically post is Agag that I agag a tab at the top of this channel. Check it out, and this is my demo project what I have just created. So we we can add multiple applications in here. So it could take some time to integrate, and then we we can see all the things in here. So that is the way how we can add the different application. If you do want to add a different channel, for example, I want to add a planner in here. So in the planner area, we can add the task by the planner and we can manage the task from the teams itself. So I can create a new plan and then I can name the tab that on which name I do want to see the new tab. Then I have one more tab is added. So that is how we can integrate with, with the different applications over there. And if this thing comes up in the picture, that for managing the security and compliance. So we can go to the team segment center and manage those things for the teams from in here. That's fine. Then moving ahead and talking about the Microsoft Viva. So the Microsoft Viva the analytical tool and we can say that that is an employee experience platform that give the people and team their best analysis over there so viva brings together the different type of communication the different type of insights knowledge and learning things over there that in the viva we can apply the different type of learning things for the employees and they, they can start utilizing the same things from in here so in the viva we have three different components are there. First one, that is the Viva connection. So that is the thing in the Microsoft Viva to keep everyone connected into the workforce. And then we have a Viva Insight. So we can use the Viva Insight to provide the privacy protected insight. So in my specific thing, let me search for the email related to the Viva. Okay, so here you can see that I have multiple emails are there. So the Viva give us the insight that how I work. So in the specific 19 this time or in the specific period of time, here you can see there are 19 days without the quite hour interruption. I have done the 3% collaboration on the time. I have worked 98% on the email, 2% on the chat and call. So that is how it is providing you the analytics on a personal node that you can track your own uh, insight by using the same. Then we have a Viva topic and Viva topic focus the knowledge and the expertise and that is the AI based tool that is using the AI for identify the knowledge and the expert and then organize them according to the different shared topics what we have. So. We can display the topic by highlighting them into the SharePoint pages. We can uh, go with the Office application topic. So the different things we have presenting to the Microsoft Viva. Then there is a slide that is talking about the SharePoint and the OneDrive. So as I told you, that by using the SharePoint, you can create an intranet site. And we have a three different type of sites are there, which we can create the team site communication site and the hub site. So we can create a team site when we do want to col create a collaboration site in order to connect our team. And then we can share the content and the resources with the specific 
person in my team and the team I provide is the file storage, sharing and the co-authoring of the document. Then we have a communication site. So the communication sites are something that is designed for broadcasting the information over there. If in your company you want to make an announcement related to the specific event, so for the same, instead of giving that information to each and every user again and again, you can create an communication a communication site and then you can publish that details over there then we have a hub site so hub sites are something that is used to organize the different team sites and the communication sites together over there then we have a microsoft OneDrive. so we we all know that the microsoft OneDrive is used to store the file so we can store the file we can manage the file we can share the files, whatever the files we have in the organization, or also we can share the file in outside the organization as well. And also we can set up the different security related things over to the OneDrive as well. Like who can have access to the file, who can view the file, who can create the file, who can edit the file and who can share the access of the file. So we can have multiple security options are also presenting to the OneDrive area. Then the Microsoft YAML comes up. So we can use the Microsoft YAML if we do want to create a different type of internal social media site. So same as like that Facebook, if we do want to create an enterprise internet based secure social network, internal social network, so for the same, we can use the YAML. And in the YAML, you can post the things, you can react on the things, you can go with the poll options. So you can also work with the different type of engagements for creating the different engagements over there. So here in my portal, let me close these tabs as of now. And here I have the Yammer in place. It is opening up. And it is opening up. Let's just wait. And now here you can see in the YAML area, I'm having the home feed, I'm having the communities, I'm having the storyline inbox. So we, we have multiple things out there. So if I do want to create a community, so let me create a demo community in here. I can set the description. I can add the members. So let me add the different members from the list then in the seconds i can manage the seconds like which type of community i'm creating it is a public community is a private community only approved members can join or in the public one anyone in my network can join this community that's okay so i have created this community first of all then in the feed I am having the detail. I can upload the photo. I can upload the cover. Then we can go to the home page. And if I want to share some thought, so I can share the thought that, for example, I want to go ahead and create a poll. Okay. So, what is Microsoft Azure Cloud? Okay. Cloud service provider, internet service provider, or none of the above. And then let me post this in the community. I have selected my demo community. And let me go with the ask. 
Hey all, you can see that I have created one poll that what is Microsoft Azure Cloud? It is a cloud service provider, internet service provider, or none of the above. Let me go to another browser where I have logged in with my user Rohit and I do want to access the YAML. And from the all application list, I do want to select YAML. Let me search for the same. And then here you can see the user can see the poll and the user can also answer. And if I go back to my portal, let me refresh this page, then I will be able to see the changes. So that is how we can use the internal site over there. And in the notification, I can see like one person voted in your poll and then I can see that a specific poll in here. So one poll, here and go to result and then I can see the result. So that is how we can work with the Yammer. That's okay. Then in this lesson, we are going to talk about the endpoint modernization and the management concept and how do we go ahead and deploy the Office 365. So first of all, if I'm talking about the endpoint capabilities, you are not getting any voucher after attending this training however if you want to learn with the things so this session is useful for you and for the voucher you have to join the microsoft virtual training day sessions it's okay so now let's just go ahead with this option so we are having the microsoft endpoint manager present and we can go ahead and access the endpoint manager it is having the capability for the Microsoft Intune. We have the configuration manager in place. We have a co-management option available. We can go ahead and run the desktop analytics. We can run and go with the Windows Autopilot option. So into this one, we can totally talking about the Microsoft endpoint management. Endpoint, it means that the devices that is going to be used by the employees or the users of the organization. So if we do want to set up a mobile device management, if we do want to set up, uh, bring your own device related scenarios. So in that one, the Microsoft Endpoint Manager help us to accomplish that type of task over there. So the Microsoft Intune is a 100% cloud-based service, which we can use for the mobile device management and the application management. and then we have a configuration manager so that is the on premises management solution previously it is known as a the sccm or we can also integrate it with the different azure services in the co-management we are having the combination of the existing on premises configuration manager with the cloud by using the intune and different other microsoft 365 cloud services by using the desktop analytics option we can go and integrate the services with the configuration manager and this service combine the data from your organization with the data that is aggregated from the different million of the devices and based on that you can identify the compatibility issue you can identify the compatibility for your applications and the driver then we have a windows autopilot and that sets up the pre-configured new devices and getting them ready for the use so into that one we can configure a few settings and we can work with the same that's okay yes you are getting the recording for the session after the session is completed and i already shared 
the link for accessing the recording. So this is the URL which you can visit to access the recording for this session. That's okay. So the Azure AD, we all know that that is going to be used by the Microsoft Endpoint Manager for managing the devices, users, and groups. You can apply the multi-factor authentication. But the important thing is that for using the Azure Active directly for managing the devices, you must have go with the premium license for the Azure Active directly. So in the Azure Active directly, we are also having the multiple licensing options are there, like free one, the premium one, the addition with the Microsoft of 365 so you have to purchase the proper license for use the proper service that's fine then we have a concept for the windows 365 and the azure virtual desktop so we already seen that the windows 365 is a cloud-based service that we can use to create the different type of windows virtual machines and we, we can say that those are the cloud personal computers for your end user and windows 365 introduce a new way to experience a Windows client to the organization for all sizes. That doesn't matter the small businesses, large businesses are using those things in here. So we can personalize the Windows 365 by using the cloud PC across the devices. We can stream those things with the different devices. We can manage them and deploy them from a single console. And also it is having the integration available for the different Microsoft products what we have. And based on that, we are also getting the support Support on the same. That's okay. Then, if I'm talking about the Azure Virtual Desktop, so that is a modern and secure desktop app virtualization thing. So, by using the same, what we can do, we can create a virtual desktop and then we can set up a multi session for the same. So, based on that, on the Azure Virtual Desktop, we have a separate course for the same like AZ140 where we are especially talking about the Azure Virtual Desktop like how do we go ahead and manage and configure the Azure Virtual Desktop so same as like that when we are working with the on-premises scenarios so on those servers we are running the remote desktop services so the thing is that if in my organization I am having the computers with the configuration uh oh with the, the specific configuration like in my computer i am having the two gig of ram or four gig of ram for example and i5 8th gen processor for example and i do want to run any software that require at least 16 gig of ram with the i5 8th generation processor so Instead of upgrading our all hardware, we can set up one server with the proper requirement and then we can host all of these applications onto that server and other clients can have access to those applications without having the hardware compatibility issue. So same as like that, we can use the cloud version of the same by utilizing the Azure Virtual Desktop. That's okay. Then there is an option for the Windows as a service. So when we are talking about the Windows as a service, so that is the way to work with the Windows desktop. And that model is designed to make the things easier for the users and for the IT professionals as well. So into this one, we are having the different type of release types are available. Like we have a feature update, we have a quality update, we have a service channel related things are there. So the feature updates are something in which we are getting the updates twice in a year. So these updates are most frequent and they are having the different benefits available for the smaller changes over there. Then we have a quality update. So the quality update provides the different security and reliability fixes over there. And by using the quality update, we can get the security updates. We can uh, get the different malicious tool update over there. If I'm talking about the service channel, so that are the first way to separate the user into the different deployment group according to the update, like which type of update they want to do. If we, if they want to go with the feature update, then we can group those users. If they want to go with the security update and all. So we have a multiple servicing channels are there. So for an example, in the general availability, the updates are 
getting by the user with the general level. In the Windows Insider program, if I'm talking about that one, so in the Windows Insider program, you are getting the most recent update. It's like we are using the beta user in the Android devices over there. So same as like that, we can connect with the Windows Insider program in order to get the updates over there. Then we have a long-term service channel update, and that is the update that is designed for the specialist devices over there that don't run the office application and those updates are used for the medical equipment or the ATMs over there. And this channel receives new feature every two or three years. So that is the long-term service channel update. So if in our computer, we, we do want to change those update settings, so how do we do that? So for the same, we can go to the settings area and in the settings, we can go to the Windows update area. And in the Windows update area, here you can see we have an advanced option where we can manage the update. And same as like that, we have a Windows Insider program thing available. So from in here, we can do register ourselves for the Windows Insider program. And here you can see that we can join the Windows Insider program first, then we can try the new feature before the release and based on that we can give the feedback. So same as like that we can enable the Windows Insider program for our devices as well. That's okay. Then there is a slide that is talking about the different deployment method of Microsoft 365. So that's okay. We all know that if we have to install the Office 365, then we have a multiple options are present. We can set up, run the setup and install the Office. So that is suitable for the one device. What if, if I have a hundred or 500 devices are available in which we have to install the Microsoft 365? So when we are performing the larger scale deployment of the Microsoft 365 application, then we have a four different type of methods are there. We can go with the local source with the configuration manager. So in the configuration manager, we can create a configuration and we can set up all the file into the local source from where we can install the Office 365 or we can say that we can deploy the Microsoft 365 application or we can use one tool that is Office deployment tool with the cloud and this is going to be download the things from the cloud and installed on the computer. Then we can go with the local source with the Office deployment tool. So if you have a setup with you and you want to install the office with that setup by using the office deployment tool. So you can do the same or you can go with the self install from the cloud option as well. So for the same, let me do one thing. I'm going to open up my portal and show you the different ways for configuring the deployments over there. So for the same, I'm opening up my Azure portal and I have to create one virtual machine. All right, in my virtual machine area, I want to create a new virtual machine. Into the MS 900 resource group and the name of my VM is going to be Office 365 VM. That's okay. I do want to deploy it into the East Key West region and the size for this VM, I do want to select, uh, first of all, let me select the operating system as Windows 10 Pro and size is 8 gig of memory with two virtual CPU. This is the username and let me enter the password for my VM. I'm confirming for the same. Then I want to allow the HTTPS traffic. Let me go with the licensing. And I don't want to make any changes into the other options in here. That's fine. By validation index fail, let me rerun it.
and go for the click. Till the time the virtual machine is clicking, let me show you the different install options what we have. So for the same, you can log in to your office.com portal and from the home area here, you can see the option for installing the office application. So you can go with this option and this will download an installer on your PC and you have to run this installer and then it will automatically install the Office 365 applications on your device. If you do want to go with other installation option, then you can select that specific option that is other installation option. And then you can select the different installation options for you. That's okay. And here you can see in the install office option. No, not on that. Let me select the specific device. Okay, I can see the option from in here. And in the apps and the devices, here you can see, you can select the language. You can select the version, that, which version you want to install, 64-bit or the 32-bit. Then same, you can select for the project and the Skype for business. And based on that, you can install the office on your application. If you guys do want to make the changes into the settings, like how you are installing the office in their system. So from the admin center, you can control those settings as well. That's OK. And here you can see, let me go to the show all. In the show all area, I have an option present for the second. In the seconds here, I am getting this option for the organizational second. In the organizational second, we have three different caps are there. The services, security and privacy and the organizational profile. So in the services area, let me scroll it down. And here you can see I'm having the office installation option. So from that specific option, we can configure the installation options for the user. So from this area, we can manage the feature update channel, which we are going to discuss in our upcoming module or in our upcoming slide. And here you can see which apps we are going to make available for the user to download in the Windows or the mobile devices. So we can select and unselect those options from in here. And based on that, users are going to see those options in their office.com portal. After that, for the office on the web, if we do want to set up some settings for the same, so we can configure those settings if we do want to allow user to open the file that is stored into the third parquet storage service. So we can allow and deny those settings from in here. If we do want to run some sort of script that when users are uh, installing the office, then which type of scripts are going to be run. So we can turn on those scripts from in here. And here you can select user how to make their task in Excel on the web. So you can allow this thing for everyone. You can allow this for the specific group of the user. So we can make the different settings over there. And the important thing is that whenever you are making the changes into this area, it could take up to 48 hours to be reflect over there. So that is how we have the multiple settings options are present. That's okay. Now, let me do one thing. Here you can see I have created my virtual machine. So let me take a remote session for the same. Okay, let me go to the connect. And I do want to connect it with the RDP session. And here I have to provide the username and the password. So as of now, we talked about the installation from the cloud. We talked about the local source. So in the local source, we have, if we have a 
application present. If we have a setup available, then we can integrate that setup with the configuration manager and all. So in this virtual machine, we are going to see this thing that if we do want to deploy the application from the cloud by using the office deployment tool. So how do we do that? So that is the thing what we are going to see in this specific demonstration. All right, so let me open up the Edge browser and I have to download the Office deployment tool into this VM, first of all. And here I have to search for OGK tool download. And OGK scans for office deployment tool. That's okay. And here you can see this is a small tool. Me open it up. And this is a command line based tool, which I'm going to use to install the office applications into it. And I want to install it into my C drive and in the OGK folder. So you can select the installation source and the destination. That's okay. And now let me open up my explorer. And here you can see in my OGK folder, I have the setup and I have the scripts over there. So which type of installation you want to make based on that you have the different scripts are available. So how we are going to install the things by using the office deployment tool. So we have to first of all open the script. So just for an example, I want to configure Office 365 with 64 bit. So let me open this script on the notepad. And, and here you can see that this is a sample configuration file and it is installing the Office 365 64 bit addition with the current cupcake channel. And it, this script is automatically configuring all the things over there. That's fine. So now, First of all, I have to open the command prompt, come to that specific directly in my C drive and OG key, then I have to run the tool. That's fine. Opening up the command prompt and be make sure when you are going to use the office deployment tool you have to open the office deployment uh, sorry command prompt with the administrative privileges that's fine then let me re direct to the ogt folder and here you can see that i have all the files are present in this specific area then how I'm going to install the thing. So I have to run the setup that is setup.exe. Then I have to use the customize switch in here. And then we have to select that specific script. Okay. Customize. And then I'm going to use the script that is configuration office 365 guest 64 XML. Okay. configuration this one and then it will launch the automatic setup for me and off is going to install in my machine 
automatically after some time so that is how we can use this ogk tool so if we do want to do the same thing on the multiple devices so we can put up that script and the second file on a single source and then we can create one more script to run that script over there so where we can go with the start process then we can set up exe and go with that option and we can run that script during the installation of the operating system and it will install the office 365 automatically when the system installs the operating system itself so we we can go for the different type of automation options over there that's fine so that is how we can use the ogiki tool and we can check back it on the later that's fine then moving ahead and talking about the different type of service channels what we have so in the service channel we are managing that how we are going to receive the update for the specific product so that is something what we are having as a part of the update channel so we have three different type of update channels are there the first one that is the current channel then we have monthly enterprise channel and then we have a semi-annual enterprise channel we can also check for the updates and we can install those updates manually as well so how, how do we configure those settings so here you can see in the portal let me open up my portal admin dot microsoft dot com No, not on this browser. Okay, here you can see in the settings area, I can go to the organization area and in the organization area here we have the option for the installation option office installation option and previously we talked about the installation tab now I'm going to discuss about the feature tab what is going to be presented in here after some time. In this feature update area, you can see that we have current channel and this will give me update onto the next update. Then we have a once in a month. So in this one, we, when we are selecting the monthly enterprise channel, then we are getting the update once in a month only. And if we are selecting that option, that is semi annual enterprise channel, then we are getting the update after every six months. So if we do want to make ourselves more updated so we can go with the current channel otherwise you have a monthly channel and semi annual enterprise channel are available that's all so that is something what we have to discuss as a part of the update channel moving ahead and talking about the different other capabilities of microsoft viva so in the microsoft viva we can go with the personal insight as i show you we can see the connected time we can see the daily briefing we can see the meeting details over there we can manage the insight by using the action plan we can create the different type of collective insights and take access over to that as an organization you can see the organizational insights like how your projects are going on how employees are going on and based on that we can see the different type of details so we can say that the viva is an analytical tool over there which which we can use to create the different type of analytical report and also viva is automatically generating the different type of report then this slide is talking about the different capabilities of microsoft 365 admin center and user portal so we already know that if we do want to access the user portal for the microsoft 365 then we have to go office.com and if you guys do want to access the admin center portal then we have to go admin.microsoft.com but the important thing is that for accessing the admin center for Microsoft 365, you must have the proper role assigned to you. So we can use the Microsoft 365 admin for adding user, deleting the user. We can manage the license for the user. We can create the group. We can manage the billing. We can create the service request. We can manage the global app setting. We can view the activity report. We can view the service and health status of the services from in there as well. And we already seen that we can access the 
the user portal for accessing the different type of application or for installing the office applications as well. So let me jump up to the admin portal and show you what are the different things which we can perform by using the admin center itself. So from in here, here you can see that I have added my company logo in here. So if I do want to go with the same thing, then I can go to the organizational profile and in the custom theme area, I have added this logo for my company. So here you can see in the default theme in the logo option, I have added this URL and this URL is redirecting me to the specific image and just let me do one thing. And here you can see this is the image and the same image I'm using for my company logo. If I do want to make the changes into the color, so I can change the color of my navigation bar itself. So let me make the change in here. Okay. And I have to provide the value and based on that, we can work with the color management things in here. We can create the different theme, we can prevent the user for overriding the theme. If we do want to show the user display name, so we, we can have multiple options are there which we can enable. Same as like that, if you are having any issue and you want to create a service request, so from the specific area, here you can see into the health area, we have option present for the health in the support area, we can create the service request. So just for an example, if I'm having issue with the teams, so I can search for the team that like I cannot able to schedule a team's live event. So for the same, it is giving me the resolution steps or also if you do want to create a new service request, then you can do the same thing. Then whenever you are running the same thing, then it asks you that like, please enter the specific email address on which you are having the error. So same as like that, it will run the cache and give you the proper resolution. However, if you do want to contact with the support, so you can raise your request and also you can see the request of your previously raised application. So here you can see I have created a request a callback attempted from the Microsoft. I can see the different case communications that cannot add a guest to the team. I have raised this issue. And based on that, I received the call from the Microsoft support. And my issue is resolved over there. So that is how we can work with the support related thing. Same as like that, if you guys do want to check the health, like how Microsoft products are working, what is the issue on the same. So you can select the service and health users for the different applications over there. So as of now in the exchange online and the teams, we are having some advisories and other applications are running properly. So we, we can see those details from in this specific area. If it comes up to managing the user, so from the user section, we can manage the user. We already seen that, that how do we go ahead and assign the user license to the user? We can manage the guests as well. So if we do want to give access to external user to the organization for accessing the different applications and the resources of my organization. So we can go for that specific option as well. That's fine. And here you can see in the all admin center, we can have option to see all the different type of admin centers what we have. And we can see the Azure Active Directory admin center, endpoint manager, exchange, security compliance, and teams. My apologies. So in this specific portal, as of now here, I have few admin centers are listed. So if we do want to see all of the admin center, then we can go a specific area. And from in here, you can see we can have access to all different admin centers what we have. And you, you are going to see the different admin centers based on the subscription and the license what you have available in your account. So that is not possible that you are seeing all the admin center. So which license you are having with you based on that, you will be able to see the different type of admin centers on your rank. That's okay. And also that is all about the module number two in here. So if, if you have any query related to this module, please let me know. Otherwise I can continue with the module number three.
Okay, all right. So thank you very much for the confirmations from your end. So this module is talking about the fundamental of the security and the compliance related thing. In this specific module, we have four different lessons are there. The first one that is talking about the security and the compliance related concept. The another one is talking about the identity concept. Then the next one is talking about the threat protection with the Microsoft 365 Defender. Like how do we go ahead and use the Microsoft 365 Defender in order to protect our organization with the different type of threats what we have. Then in the last area, we are going to talk about the service cost portal and the privacy related thing from the Microsoft. That's okay. So now just talking about the very first concept that is related to the security and all. So the first one that is going to be known as a shared responsibility model. So we can understand the shared responsibility model into the different ways. So if we are working with the cloud, environment so in that case there are few responsibilities are there those are related to the security and those responsibilities are going to be transferred to the cloud service provider based on the cloud service which you are using so it's really important to understand that when you are using the infrastructure as a service, when you are using the platform as a service, when you are using the software as a service, then which responsibilities is going to be managed by the customer or the organization and which responsibilities are going to be managed by your cloud service provider. So in this picture on the presentation, you guys can see a chart where all the things are described. When you are working with the on-premises scenario, in that specific scenario, the organization or we can say the customer is responsible for each and everything. In the infrastructure as a service model, the Microsoft is going to be responsible for managing the physical host, for managing the network, for managing the data center for you, and the organization is responsible for the rest of the responsibilities over there. In the platform as a service scenario, the Microsoft is providing you the support for managing the things till the operating system over there. Then after that, the network control application in the identity and infrastructure is a shared responsibility model between you and the Microsoft. So for your application, for your network control, for your identity and directory infrastructure, Microsoft is taking some steps to give you the security and some steps is going to be taken by the customer itself in order to create the security. So let me give you one example for the same. So just for an example, when I'm trying to access the Azure portal or any Microsoft service. So here you can see like if I'm opening the admin dot Microsoft dot com. And I'm selecting my this account. Let me hit the enter with the password. Uh oh, oh. And there you can see, I'm getting this dialog box again and again that help us to protect your account. So the Microsoft has enabled the security default to keep your account secure. So in if in 14 days, I'm not providing the multi-factor authentication detail, then after 14 days, it is required to enable the multi-factor authentication on my user. So that is a Microsoft managed security for me. And for enabling the multi-factor authentication, that is my responsibility as a user or as a customer. So that is the shared responsibility between me and my cloud service provider, Microsoft. When we are talking for the software as a service, in that specific area, the Microsoft is going to manage the things till the application level for you. Then the identity and infrastructure is a shared responsibility model. So as I give you the example where I am using the Microsoft 365, so it means I am utilizing the software as a service application, sorry, software as a service model. So in that model, the Microsoft is managing all the things for Microsoft 365 for me. Then for protecting my identity, it is giving me the suggestion to enable the multi-factor authentication on my account. And after 14 days, it is 
required. So why I'm getting that specific pop up again and again? Because by default, the security default option is enabled in the Azure Active Directory. So let me go to the Azure portal in here. And in the Azure portal, if I go back to the Azure Active Directory area, in the properties of Azure Active Directory, you guys can see that I have one property enabled that is security default. So if I turn off this security default, then I'm not getting those pop up again. So by default, this thing is enabled on all your accounts. So if you guys do want to add some conditional access policy, then you can turn it off. That's okay. Then we have a concept for the zero trust model. So what zero trust model says, so previously in the traditional ways what happened when we are accessing the things from the corporate network. So we are accessing the things from the corporate network behind the firewall of the corporate network, then it assumes everything as a secure. But what zero trust model says that trust no one and verify everything. So even if you are accessing the resources and the application from the behind of you, behind the firewall of your corporate network, it also assumes that that is a not a secure connection. So in that specific area, we have three different guiding principles are there for the zero plus model. The first one that is verified explicitly. The next one least privilege access and the last but not the least that is assume breach. So in the verify explicitly, it says that if you do want to access to the resource and the application or the service for an organization, then you must have to verify your identity in a multiple manner. So how we are identifying ourselves by the username and the password. And then we have to provide the multi-factor authentication by getting up the OTP on the phone, the OTP on the authenticator application itself. So based on that, we are verifying our identity again and again. Then the least privilege access mod guiding principle comes up and it says that you have to only assign the rights, role and the access to the user that is required to perform the specific task only. So if you are not doing so, then you are compromising with the access related thing. Then the assume breach guiding principle comes up. So it assume every connection, every access as a breach, and then it will monitor the behavior of that access. And based on that, it will protect your organization. And this will give the one extra layer of protection to the organization for the different type of threats over there. In the zero trust model, we have six different pillars are there. Those are responsible for managing the things like identity, devices, application, data, infrastructure, and the network. So in the zero plus model, it says that we have to protect our identity because we are going to use the identity in order to access the data, in order to access the application, in order to access the resources of my organization. So a identity could be a user, a identity could be a group over there. Then we have a devices in the devices because the devices is directly connected to the internet. So we, we must have to provide the proper security to the devices and then the application comes up. So the applications are the thing where we are consuming the data. So we have to check which applications we are using and how we are secure with that specific application. Then the data comes up in the line. So data is the very important and the critical part for any organization. So by using these guiding principle, we can easily protect with our data. Then the infrastructure comes up. In the infrastructure, we have to maintain the security for the infrastructure. And we can create the different network segmentation if we do want to maintain the security for our networks itself. That's okay. Moving ahead and talking about the encryption and the hashing related concept. So we are using the encryption concept for changing the form of the data. Uh, yes, do you have any query?
Uh, Sashank, do you have any query? Okay, I'm muting you. So the thing is that when we are talking about the encryption, so the encryption is the process where we are changing the form of the gate cap. So for an example, if I'm typing here uh, number one, number two, and three, so for you all, this is one, two, three, but what I thought in my mind, I thought that I am representing one with the alphabet A, I'm representing number two with the alphabet B, I'm representing the number three with the alphabet C. So that is how we are changing the information. So for the encryption, we are using the keys. So my DAC thought is a key to decrypt DAC specific code over there. So we have the two different type of encryptions are there, the symmetric encryption and the asymmetric encryption. So in the symmetric encryption, we are using the same shared key for encrypting and decrypting the document. And in the asymmetric encryption, we have a two different keys are there, the public key and the private key, which we are using for encrypting and decrypting the thing. We can encrypt the GECA when we have a GECA at risk. So for example, if we have stored the GECA into the hard drive, if we have stored the GECA into the removable drive, if we have stored the GECA into the GECA base. So in that specific area, we are encrypting the GECA at rest. So when we are sharing the GECA, for example, we are transferring the GECA from one device to another device, we are uploading the GECA to the cloud. So at that time, if we are encrypting the GECA, so that is the encryption that is known as a encryption of the GECA in transit over there. That's okay. Then moving ahead and talking about the next concept, here. So that is all about the different security related concepts which we have to discuss in here. Now we are moving ahead with the second area and that specific area is talking about the identity related things over there. That's fine. So in this specific area, the first concept which we need to know that is the authentication and the authorization. So what does it mean? In the authentication, you are only proving that you are authenticated to get the access over to the resources or over to the application. In the authorization, you are providing or oh, sorry, you, you are uh, authorizing yourself to access the thing. So the authorization describes the level of access what you have after you have authenticated. So let me give you one quick example for the same. So here you can see in my portal, if I'm opening up my Azure portal in here, I have created one user Rohit in my Active Directory or, or we can say that in my Azure Active Directory. Let me try to authenticate with that user. So if I do want to do the same. So I'm opening up the portal.azure.com. And here I want to make a login with my user Rohit. So just because of my user Rohit is present in my Azure Active Directory and I am using the correct username and the password. So my user Rohit is authenticated to access the Azure portal. So that is something which is known as a authentication. Now, when it comes up to the authorization, then here you can see in my subscription, if I go to the all resources, I have few virtual machines in place. I have one web application in place. I have few other resources are there. I have one subscription into the my portal. But same if the user Rohit is seeing the thing, then in the user Rohit, we are not having any subscription. So you cannot have any subscription or you cannot have permission to access any one of the subscription. So that is the authorization. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to authorize my user Rohit to view all the things, whatever the things we have in my subscription. So for the same, I'm moving to the subscription area 
And here in the access current role, I'm going to assign a role to my user Rohit. And I do want to assign the reader role only. So by having the reader role enabled, user Rohit can only view the things, whatever the things I have in my subscription. Let me assign the role. And again, I'm going to refresh the portal for my user Rohit. And now here you can see in the subscription, my user Rohit can have the access to the subscription with the reader role. So by having the reader role, if Rohit do want to see the different resources, what I have, then user can see. And let me do one thing. I'm going to create a resource group. So here you can see when I'm trying to create a resource group in that specific area, I am not authorized to do the same task. Why? Because you do not have permission to create a resource group under the subscription because user Rohit is only having the reader permission available. Let me go back to my admin portal and in the role assignment area, let me select it and I want to remove this role assignment and I want to assign one another role to my user Rohit and this time I'm going to make owner. So what owner can do? Owner can have full access to manage the resources or I'm going to assign the contributor role. So what contributor role can does? Grant full access but cannot allow to share the role with any other user. <coughs> That's okay. So let me go with the owner role as of now and I do want to assign this role to one of my user Rohit and then let me go with the review and assign. And once the role assignment has been done, then we, we can go to the specific Rohit Azure portal. Let me refresh the page again from the server. And in the subscription area, you can see that as of now, user is having the regular role. That's fine. Let me sign out and make a login again to the portal. All right, it could take some time to be updated. Okay, and in the subscription area, you can see it is a regular rule how this is happening. Let me check it on my end. User row hit is having the owner rule. That's fine. Let me close this browser. And again, I'm going to open the browser. So that's fine. It happened when we are frequently assigning and removing the role to the user, then it could take some time to update the things. Okay, I have again logged in with the same user. In the subscription area. Now, here you can see the user Rohit is having the owner role. So now, if user do want to create a resource group or any resource in the portal, then user can create automatic, uh, create it. Okay. So demo RG Rohit and the location is East QS for the resource group. And then now here you can see the user will be able to create a resource group. So that is the difference between the authentication and the authorization. Fine.
Moving ahead with the next concept, so it says that the define identity as a primary security parameter. So yes, when we are working with the online scenarios, so in that specific area, we have to give the access to our partners, we have to give the access to our employees, we can have the access to the different cloud application. We can also use the identity to connect with the on-premises scenario. We can manage the devices by using the identity. So in that specific area, the identity is a main thing. And if it comes up to the security, so if we are securing the identity, then we are securing the different things because for accessing the cloud applications, for accessing the on-premises applications, for accessing the partners and the customers data, for accessing our employees data, for accessing the different applications in our organization, we we are using a common thing that is identity. So that's why we can call the identity is a primary security parameter. So if we do want to set up a security for our organization, so we have to start securing our identities first by implementing the multi-factor authentication, by implementing the conditional access policy, and the different type of governance related scenarios also, which we can create like access review and all for uh, for securing our identities. So in the identity infrastructure, we have four different pillars are there. So we already talked about the authentication and the authorization. When it comes up to the administration, so administration is something that is related to the creation of the identities, management of the identities, and, and governance of the identities for the different devices, for the different users and the services. So as an administrator, you can manage the how and under what circumstances you are going to create the identity, you are going to delete the identity or update the identity as well. Then we have a auditing pillar in the same page. So the auditing pillar is talking about the tracking that who does what, who does when, where, and how. So the auditing include the in-depth report and the alert for governing the different identities what we are having in the portal. That's fine. Then moving ahead and talking about some concepts those are related to the directory services and active directory. So when we are working with the on-premises environment, in the on-premises environment, we have to manage the computers, we have to manage the users, we have to manage the network shares, we have to manage the different policies. So for the same, what we are doing, we are using one service that is known as a active directory and we can use that active directory domain services to create a logical grouping of the devices. So it will create a domain and that domain is a logical boundary for the organization in which we are having our, all the users are there, network, file share, printers, all over there. So the first of all, Microsoft introduced the active directory in Windows 2000 operating system. Then we can include the devices into it. We can include the users for verifying their credentials, for defining their access over there. So we can say that if we do want to manage the things inside the network only, we do want to set up one identity provider. So in that case, we are using the active directory domain services. That's okay. But active directory domain services is not having the support for managing the mobile devices. Now, if I'm talking about the Azure active directory, so that is the evaluation of the identity and access management solution. Because in the Azure active directory, we can help the organization to create a solution for accessing the different cloud applications like Microsoft 365, Dynamics 365, Power Platform and all. Also, you can integrate your Azure Active Directory with your on-premises Active Directory domain services. So that is a identity as a service solution. We can say that that is provided to us by the Microsoft. That's fine. 
Then there is a concept for the federation. So the federation concept is totally relies on the crust relationship. So here in this picture, you can see that we have a two different identity providers are there. So what are the identity providers? The service which we are using for managing the identity, the service which is responsible for the authenticating the identity, the service which is responsible for authorizing the identities. So those services are known as a identity provider over there. It's okay. So in this specific picture, you can see we have two different identity provider. The identity provider A, for example, that is a, sorry, B, that is a B.com. And then we have an identity provider A, that is a A.com. And we have the website present into the identity provider A. So if this user wants to access that specific website, then what we have to do, we have to first of all create this user in here. So just for an example, the name of this user is Rahul. So we have to create an identity. We have to create a user into the identity provider A with Rahul at the rate A.com then user can have access to this website. But what federation concept says that, it says that user Rahul can use their existing identity that is Rahul at the rate b.com in order to access the website which is present into the different identity provider into the domain A. And how it is happening because when we are creating the federation thing, then identity provider A crashed to the identity provider B. And then this is going to be have a shared access over there. So that is the concept of the federation. So where we are creating the crushed relationship between two different identity providers. So that is the federation concept over there. That's okay. So that is all about this lesson in here. Now moving ahead and talking about the threat protection by using the Microsoft 365 Defender services. So in the Microsoft 365 Defender suit, we have the multiple type of products are there. We have a Microsoft Defender for identity. We have a Microsoft Defender for Endpoint. We have a Microsoft Defender for Cloud App. We have an email collaboration or we can say that we have a Microsoft 365 Defender for Office 365. So what does it mean? So there is a confusion that if we have a Microsoft 365 Defender, then what are these different things what we have? So we are using the Microsoft Defender for identity. If we do want to protect our users, if we do want to protect the objects what we have in the Azure Active Directory over there, and inside this one, we are having one more tool available that is Azure AD Identity Protection. In the Defender for Endpoint area, we are using that thing to manage the devices, whatever the devices we have. In the Microsoft Defender for cloud application, if we do want to manage the different cloud application, if we do want to set up a conditional based access policy, if we do want to set up a file based access policy, if we do want to allow and deny the specific application to be used in my organization. So these all are the settings which we can manage from this specific Defender for cloud app portal. Same as like that, if we do want to protect our email, if we do want to protect the collaboration, we can set up the different type of data loss prevention policy. If we do want to protect our organization with the anti-pishing thing, if we do want to protect our organization with the malware spam things. So for implementing those things, we can use Microsoft Defender for Office 365. And all of those comes up into a single picture that is Microsoft 365 Defender. So in the Microsoft 365 Defender, we have different integrated environments are there, which we can use for protecting the specific thing what we have, whether it is an identity, endpoint, application, or our email itself. That's fine. Then if I'm talking about the Microsoft Defender for Office 365, so for this one, we are having the two different plans are there. The first one that is Microsoft Defender for Office 365 plan one. By using that plan, we can 
create the safe attachment policy. So if someone is catching the malicious attachment with the mail, so we can protect our organization with those attachment. We can create the safe link policy. So when user is clicking on the any link, then the policy checks for the link. So if that link is okay, then user can have access. Otherwise, the access for the link is blocked over there. Then we have an option for the share attachment for the SharePoint OneDrive or team. We can go with the anti-patient anti protection and the real-time detection for the threat. In the Microsoft Defender for Office 365 Plan 2, we have all the capabilities are there, which we have in the Plan 1. However, it is also having the capability for the threat tracker that will provide the latest intelligence related to the different threats and the issues. We have a threat explorer that is giving us a real-time report that allow you to identify and analyze the recent threat what we have. It is also having the auto investigation and response capability that will give you the capability to run the things automatically on a form of the playbook in order to investigate and respond over to the different threats we have. You can run the attack simulator in order to simulate the attack for your organization to identify the vulnerability. If you guys do want to check and train your employees awareness for the threats over there, so you can plan for those attacks. Then we can proactively hunt for the different threat with the advanced hunting option. So in the Microsoft 365 Defender, we are having the advanced hunting capabilities also present. And by using the Microsoft 365 Defender plan to, you can have the access to detect the different type of alert. And based on that, you can see the different incident for a group of the alert. And then you can start investigating on the same. Then we have a Microsoft Defender for Endpoint. So you can use the Microsoft Defender for Endpoint that give you the threat vulnerability management. So if your organization is vulnerable to the threat, so you can create the different type of management things by which you can manage the threats and you can easily hunt the threats what we are having from the endpoint. It will reduce the attack surface reduction for the devices. So you can make your devices more secure by using the Microsoft Defender. You can go with the next generation protection. We have a endpoint detection and response option available. You can run the automatic investigation. And also when it is required, you can go ahead and take a help from the Microsoft Threat Expert as well. So let me give you one example. I want to make a login into one portal. So let me open up my browser again. And I want to go to the security dot Microsoft dot com. And let me use this credential. Okay, so it is opening up. And from this specific portal, you can see that I have devices. And in the devices area, you can see that I have two active devices. And in the active devices, I can see the different event for the devices. I can go with the incidents if we have for any device. And based on that, we can go and run the investigation. We can isolate the device. We can go and initiate the live response session for the device. So we have the multiple things are there. We can see the alert. Like here you can see the malware was detected in as a file. And we can see all the things from in here. So same as like that, we can manage the endpoints in a very 
proper manner by using the same tool. Same, we can use the Microsoft Defender for Cloud application if we do want to work with the application security. So we are using the different type of application and the Cloud App Service Broker is something that acts as a gatekeeper to broker real-time access between your enterprise user and your cloud resource, what they are using and wherever they are located. So that is the Microsoft Defender for Cloud application and how we can access the thing. So here in the portal, you can see, let me open up my browser again. And in this specific area, I'm having the cloud apps option present. So in the cloud discovery, we can see the different type of applications, what we have. We can see the dashboard, that how many applications I am having in here, how many IP addresses, how many users are connected. Based on that, we can see the sanctioned application, unsanctioned application, another application. If we do want to go ahead, sorry, and create the different type of policies over there, like you want to create some sort of file policy, you want to create some sort of access policy. So based on that, we can create different type of policies over there, and then you can implement those policies to the application. So for an example, you want to create a policy for your Office 365 web applications that no one can download or print the file. So for creating those type of policies, we can go ahead and use the Microsoft Defender for cloud apps itself that's okay then we have a microsoft defender for identity so if we do want to monitor and the behavior of a user for the same we can use the microsoft defender for identity we can protect the user identity to reduce the attack surface by uh, giving them the recommendation to set up a a strong password. We can easily identify the suspicious activity and we can also investigate the different alerts or the user activity. So we can also install the Microsoft Defender for identity to our on-premises device. If we do want to manage the identities and assign the more protection capability to our on-premises identities what we have. Then in the Microsoft 365 Defender portal, we can see the incident and the alert. We can see the secure score, learning hub, report, permission, and role. So let me just show you that how do we see all the things. So in the Defender portal, here, let me go back to the home page. So here you can see I'm having the incident and alert area. In the incident, we can list all of the incident what we have. Then we can see the alert. Those alerts are associated with that specific incident. We can go with the hunting option. We have a threat analysis option. We can visit to the secure score in order to see that how much my organization is secure. We can go to the identities if we do want to manage the identity protection things over there. So we have a multiple options are there. Same as like that, if we do want to manage the compliance related thing, so we can go to the compliance manager and see all the activity that activity is performed on the device. That's okay. Then in the fourth section, it is talking about the service trust portal. So the service trust portal is the thing where we are having the information available related to the different resources over there. So the service trust portal is an area from where we can access the different type of report. We can access the different type of telemetry data over there. So that will give us the information for the resources like privacy policies, compliance practices over there. So how do we go ahead and access the service trust portal? So we can go to this short URL that is aka.ms slash stp. And by visiting to that link, we can go ahead and access the Microsoft service trust portal for the same. And from in here, we have to make a sign in with the account, what the account we are using. And here you can see I have the library option. So if you do want to save some compliance document, if you guys do want to save some report and based on that, you can manage the 
compliance and the security structure of your organization. So you can take a look from there by using the service class portal. You can also enable the email notification that like if any <coughs> Update is comes up under to the specific certification, specific regulation or the standard. So you can get those notification on your email itself. You can go and visit the different artifacts. And you can also check the resources for your organization. Like what other resources are there available for your organization? That's fine. Then the Microsoft Priva comes up in the line. So the Microsoft Priva is something which we can use for the compliance related things. So how do we use Microsoft Priva. So for the same here, you can see if I'm opening up one more portal that is compliance dot Microsoft dot com. So from the compliance portal, we can see that the activity of the file, we can see the personal data matches, we can see the subject like request. So we can have access to the all detail. We can track the things from the private portal and that is only a dashboard thing what we have. Here you can see in this specific area, we have the option for the activity explorer in the compliance portal. So like let me go with the activity explorer option. So in the information protection area, or I can go with the, the data loss prevention option. Here you can see the activity explorer. So in this specific thing, you can see that file created on the removable media. On my another device in Today, I have copied few files, like I have copied those files, I have renamed few files. So here you can see that I am getting all the details present into the Activity Explorer. We can track all the things, like whatever the things we have performed on the removable media. Same as like that in the Privacy Risk Management area, if we do want to see all the things in a dashboard, so this will private dashboard which we are having and in which we can see the different type of dashboards based on the personal data, if we have any data available with the existing policy matches, so we can see that data. Same as like that, we are having the data profile option present, and here you can see whatever the data I have that is matched with the policy and based on that we can see the different type of dashboards over there. And if you guys do want to create a new policy for matching the data content, so from this specific area, you can go ahead and create the different policies as well. That's okay. So that is all what we have to discuss in the third module in here. Before moving ahead to the last module for the MS900, Please let me know everyone if you have any query from the module number three as well. All right. So Thank you very much everyone for the confirmations from your end. So now I'm going to start working with the, the fourth module of the MS900. And here this module is depending on the different licensing option what we have in the Microsoft 365. Then in this lesson, we are going to talk about the different service support related things in the Microsoft 365. So in the very first lesson, we are going to talk about the licensing option availability into the Microsoft 365. And here we are having the two different type of models are there. The first one that is a cloud solution provider model and the another one that is an enterprise agreement. So the cloud solution provider model is a Microsoft partner program that provides the expertise and service you need through the expert cloud service provider. So in that specific area, your Microsoft 365 subscription is provided through a cloud service provider partner and who can manage your entire subscription, who can provide you the billing and also that is going to we provide you the technical support as well. So the cloud service provider or sorry, my apologies, cloud solution provider 
will have the admin privilege that will allow them to access your canning. They can go ahead and create the direct support, configure and manage the license settings for the same. So the cloud service solution partner can provide the extra consultancy and advice to ensure the security, to ensure the productivity for your organization. Then we have a enterprise level agreement and how, how can we find a specific cloud service cloud solution partner so i'm sharing one link over to the chat and also i'm going to open the specific link on my browser so you we can visit to that specific link and then we can find a perfect cloud solution partner for us based on the location so if i'm going to use my location as of now so you can select the different partners what i have Also, we can have the multiple filters are there, like uh, the customer size we can select, we can select the industry for which we are working, we can select the product for which we do want to see the solution. So same as like that, we can have the list of partners are available. And then if I click on the contact me, then, then they will contact me. And here we can say that on which services they are providing the solution. So this one that is known as Dynamics Southwest, this partner is giving me the support for Azure, Dynamics 365 Enterprise, Dynamics AX, GP, NAV, Power BI, and the developer tool. So same as like that, based on our requirement, we can select the specific cloud solution partner. Moving ahead and talking about the next one, that is an enterprise agreement. So that is designed for the organization that want to, to license software and client services for a minimum three year period. So the enterprise agreement offers the best value to the organization who are having the 500 or more users or devices over there. So for the same, we have the specific option present. Then after, if I'm talking about the next concept that like is talking about the support. So in this one, you are having the 24 into seven support present for the same. That's fine. Now moving ahead with the next slide. So in the billing area, you have two different options are there, the billing account option and the bill management. So in the billing account option in the Microsoft 365 admin center, you can go to the billing account area and then you can select the different type of billing options for you, like Microsoft online service program, Microsoft product service agreement program and Microsoft customer agreement. In the bill management area, you can go ahead and upgrade, renew and reactivate your subscription. You can see the number of licenses, what you have. You can see the invoices, payment method and all. So how do we go ahead and see all those things? So for the same here, I'm opening up my portal and let me go to the admin dot Microsoft dot com. And from in here in the billing section, you can see the billing account. In the billing account, you can see all of your billing accounts, what you have. Then you can select the bill and the payment where you can see all of your invoices, what you have. If you have added any payment method, so you can see that you can manage your billing profile from in here. In the licenses or your product area, you can see that how many licenses you have as of now, how many available licenses you have. So these all are the settings which we can see from that specific area. So from the license and the product area, we can go with those options like upgrade, renew and all. Then we have a different type of plans are there. So as we discussed in starting that we have a business plan, home plan, education plan. So based on that, we have different type of plans are there. So for the Microsoft 365 home, we have the family plan and we have a 
personal plan as well. Then in the Microsoft 365 education, we are having the A1 plan available, A3 plan and A5 plan available. So in each and every plan, we have a different type of service and the supports are available. In the Azure government, that is a plan for the government institutions over there. So in this one, we are having the different features like G1, G3 and G5. In the business one, we are having the business premium month to month or else in the for frontline worker so for this one we are having the f1 f3 and f plan f5 subscriptions are there in the enterprise one we have microsoft 365 e3 e5 and f3 plans are available so the, based on the plan whatever the plan you are selecting you are going to look and see the different services and the product in your subscription in your environment in your account and based on that you are getting the support from the microsoft whatever the plan you are using that's okay then moving ahead and talking about the licenses so license is something that will allow you to use the feature and the service whatever the service is included into the subscription so in the microsoft we are having the usl that is user subscription license and this is this divided into four different categories all right so the full usl says that that is for the new customer who have not previously purchased any one of the microsoft product and service then we have an add on user service or sorry user subscription license so the add-on usl says that if you have an existing license available with you and you do want to add the specific product over there a specific license over there then you can go with the add-on usl then we have a from sa usl it says that that is a software assurance so in that one that is for the on-premises software assurance customer that want to transaction to the cloud then in the setup USL, that are acceptable for the customer who want to upgrade their level of their service. So based on that, each user is accessing the Microsoft 365 service is required to assign a user subscription license by the administrator. So in the add-on, we are having the traditional one or we are having the standalone one. So in the traditional add-on, they are linked to the specific subscription. Like if you are purchasing the Microsoft E5 license, then the defender is added on automatically with the same. So that is the traditional add-on. If I'm talking about the standalone one, so that is the subscription subscription which you can enable from your product page and you can purchase the subscription as an add-on. So that is the standalone add-on over there. That's fine. Moving ahead and talking about the different support offering. So Microsoft is giving you the support over to the community. You can access the Microsoft community. You can go with the proactive support. Microsoft providing the web, email, check, and phone support. So when you are creating the service request, then Microsoft asks you that how you want to get in touch in by the email, by phone. And based on the different things, we have a premier support also available and if we do want to go through with the microsoft partner support then that option is also available to us that's fine then if i'm talking about the health status so based on the service level agreement by using the portal we can go to the health section and from in here we can check the health and service status for the same and based on that we can select the availability and continuity of that specific service itself Then if you guys do want to share your feedback, so for the same Microsoft provide you the multiple window, you can go to the feedback area and provide your feedback. In my portal, here you can see, in my this portal, if I go to the show all area, then we can have the option for the feedback also. If, if it is not searching up, let me search for the feedback. Right. 
And here you can see you can manage the feedback. You can go with the product feedback. In the health area, we are having the product feedback. So we you can create the feedback and we can send the feedback over there. So like that, Microsoft is giving us the multiple window for giving the feedback to the Microsoft. We can go with the product experience. We can write to the tech community. We can provide the feedback on the stores as well. And the multiple other options are there. Then if I'm talking about the life cycle management over there, so in the life cycle management, Microsoft is managing the how the software and how the new things are going to be available for you. So the first one that is a private preview in this specific availability area, the Microsoft might have the thing available for the specific internal users only. Then they can have go with the public preview so in the public preview microsoft give you the preview on the product you are using the product and then you are providing the feedback and then microsoft work on the feedback and if everything goes fine then it will be available for all of the users has a general availability over there and when the microsoft end the support so that is the end of the support thing over there so when microsoft is retiring any product and the service then microsoft is using the end of support over there that's fine so that is all about in this module and also that is all about in the ms 900 from my end so before winding up the session for today for this course MS900. Everyone, please go ahead and raise your queries if you have any. So I'm really happy to answer all of them or otherwise we can wind up the session for today. All right, so thank you very much for the confirmations and everything looks good in here. So thank you very much once again, everyone for joining me in the session and we'll see you all in the next session. Thank you.